hey guys, Lucky Red, got a bunch of friends here. We got Muffin, who has to yell across the room. I don't have to yell. That's her that's, yeah, that, that is her choice. You're not wrong. I could have set up the other microphone, but she didn't think of that. We haven't used that one yet. Yeah. Um, but we got we got our boy Blue. We got Izak here. I am Izak. Uh, and we got... Y-Z-A-H-K. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta... Sp yeah, that, that's just how it's uh, pronounced. You, you spell it out yeah, every time. Uh, and we got good... Yggdrasil? Yeah, that, yeah. Yggdrasil, <laughs> Isak? <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. Oh, yeah. yeah I I... Isaac is in front of all the tourists. No, 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 no. It's not anything to do with me being a tree. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, no, it's entirely to do with... Yeah, he's part of the... Yggdrasil is spelled with two Y's. To make the yeah. Is he part of the Izak. Yggdrasil? No, Yggdrasil, Yggdrasil is too. He's right. Yggdrasil is very silly. I've this out, Morgan. I've had it for a while. He he has used this bit quite a lot. Uh, and we got good friend Morgan for the first time on the channel. Hi. Yeah, I, I assume you didn't really have a silly name, so I figured just we'll just. I mean, she does. She just, you know, she doesn't like any of them. Okay. I just go with the good old, hey, what's up, Morg? Oh yeah, my favorite. Morg, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I think that's awful. Uh... Yeah, you better behave, Zach, or I'm gonna send you to the fucking morgue. Uh... <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, did just go over to her place and say hi. <laughs> That's my big punishment. That's true. Was, was... Okay. I totally just looked it up. Yggdrasil is spelled Y G G D R A S I L. <laughs> so the, the spelling's not important. <laughs> the, the important part is I'm right. Yeah. I spelled a whole country in DG based off of Norse mythology. You're going to question me? Yes. <laughs> I'm coming. That's fine, but to be fair, I probably can't make the rest. So. <laughs> that is basically what happened. Though with context, I stealthily stalked a, a person and they never noticed me until they went into a very tiny room, which I walked into with them. Only for them... Out of the way. Yeah, well, because yeah, well, when I opened the door, they saw me. And then I just kind of pushed them slightly out of the way to listen for them and they noticed me. And I... Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was like, oh, I think they see me, and then I, and then I, I was sad because I got noticed, so I got up and <laughs> walked walked out with my head down. You sat down. They all stared at you. You realized they were all staring at you. You went, oh shit, and you got up and like left. The best part they... one of the pirates tried to like talk to you, and you just like shook your head. No, no. One one of the one of the sailors did. <laughs> One of the sailors setting up the ship tried to talk to me, and, and I just put my hand on their shoulder and shook my head no. No, no. Well, because they were pirates, and then there were also ship workers, like, on the dock. And the dockman tried to stop me, and I just ignored I just put my hand on their shoulder and shook my head no and walked away. And everyone was so flabbergasted that they didn't stop me. Because they were, they were so baffled on what just happened. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. So we're going to do a tier list. We've only done a couple tier... We've, we've done more top tens than we've done tier lists, but uh, we had a fun suggestion from our boy, uh, Blue, as well as Morgan, to tier up some of our favorite 
anime protagonist. So we just like collected a bunch of random ones. Uh, so we could rate them on good old tier list. Uh, I like, we don't know all of them, uh, because some of us know more. Know all of them. Yeah, we don't all know all of them, but well, at least two of us knows all of them. Yes. That was part of the, that was part of the conditions. Yeah, and then uh, that that is true. Well, actually, that's not true. Muffin knows probably like three of them. <laughs> also, uh, again, we made sure that, yeah, or I made sure that we picked ones you did. Yeah, we made sure to not keep everyone completely in the dark. Uh, how like the big criteria was really just ones we might know. Um, so these assorted characters might seem odd, and that's just because uh, we don't branch out a lot in terms of anime. <laughs> uh, we also didn't. We also wanted just like a limited amount, so we didn't want to go too ham. Um, it's not technically true. It's because Shonen is where we all kind of overlap. Yeah. We all have different tastes. We all watch shows the other ones do. Yeah. The the only one I could think of was Miss Kobayashi, which myself and Muffin have watched, and that's the only like non Shonen I could really think of. <laughs> ah, I, sh I had other ones. Ah, uh, should. Like from Golden Boy, or... <laughs> I mean, we have seen that. <laughs> uh. I mean, oh man, I should have pitched Excel Excel. <laughs> I didn't think of Excel Excel from Excel Saga or Bobobo. Oh, I forgot Gintoki. There was somebody after that. Damn it. Oh well. Too late now. I told you Gintoki. I know, and then I forgot. I was saving images, and I forgot to grab one of my favorite shonen characters of all time. Uh, now it's gonna feel incomplete, and I'm gonna hate myself for it. But that's just how it is sometimes. Just, just put it in break here and call it done. I, I mean, I would, but I, I, I actually can't. So that's my have an inch of, we're, we're just gonna say so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll argue about it. We just, we just work. Yeah. Sounds good. No, you know what you do. What? I've got it. Don't what worry. you do is you get the picture of him and then I, you put it over the no, stream. <laughs> Damn it. That was actually what I was going to do. <laughs> that was what I was going to do. I knew it. I'll take care of it later. For now, I'm just going to save the image and handle it uh, after. Stop it. Let me, let me click. Damn it. Great, good, okay, bad, and terrible. Is that correct? We have great, good, okay, bad, and terrible. Yes. So the bad ones I said. That's why I said yes, because I was saying yes. You you are right. All right. So who are we starting off with? Well, first we need to save this image, no. and then we can start. But what? Freaking computer is like. I need it needs to be, it needs to be reset. Morgan, do you see this? So well, now I'm thinking about putting a costume together for Zach and Ashley wedding. <laughs> you gonna be a tiefling? <laughs> we talked about playing our D and D characters, but I had to settle on one. Mm. And so you know, we'll get in a couple of days to see if I did settle on one. There. That being said, as it turns out, there's a tiefling that had a bunch of spells that I was very much happy to grab for being a tiefling. Including the came from minor image, which is there we go. one I just want to have because it sounds like an easy one to All right. one of those ones. So I think the best way to do this is just to go in the order we have it because it just put it in a random order based on when I, like when the files were saved into it. So it it gives us a nice randomized setup. So our very first boy, because it is a boy, is Josuke Joestar. Is he a Joe Star? He's... He is a Joe Star. His last name is Higashikata. That's right. That's right. Josuke Higashikata. And um, honestly, I have to vote for Great. Uh, I love, I love Josuke so much. Uh, he's fun as hell. 
and he's just such a likable character. He's just a big dork who's a, occasionally very morally ambiguous, but always does the right thing anyway, even if sometimes he does cheat his friends out of money. My only complaint with him is he's not very central to the plot after the introduction of Kira. Mm -hmm. Like, after Kira's introduced, really Rohan kind of becomes the main character. In a way. More gay, but like, Rohan's the one who actually has like a, uh, uh, like actual stake in the story. Jessica's just kind of there. I mean, Morgan. he's not even the one who actually defeats Kira. Like. Yeah, but he is the one who end who like end fights him though. He is probably my favorite. I mean, his part's the best. He's also great. Um, it's it, it, he. He is one of the cases where he he is not needed to carry his great arc, unlike another character who we'll get to. Um, but he he is fantastic. So absolutely I, I great too. Oh yeah, Koichi. Um, Four easily has the best cast, without question. Yeah, Rohan. Even like Jotaro is a support character and in his best outfit. Um, I actually thought I would hate old. Huh? No. Uh, old man Joseph. Old uh, older man Joe Star. Uh, I didn't. I thought I would find annoying, but I didn't. I actually liked him a lot, and. Uh, um, He's also just not hated enough to get annoying. Yeah, I forget Josuke's best friend's name. The uh, fucking... Who's the Joe bro? Yeah. What, what was his name? Okiyasu. Okiyasu. It's like, it's, it starts with an O, what is it? He's also great. Uh, same with, uh, wow. same with Boy with Bees. Bee stings on his head. Uh, I thought he'd be a lame character. No, he's actually great. His major scene is fantastic. Are you, are you talking about the one they with the lottery ticket stuff? Yeah. Dude, I love that. Yeah, he's great too. I love him. I have zero feelings about him, but yeah. I. I yeah, uh, he was just kind of there. But I just love that Josuke and Okiyasu, they're literally like the perfect example of we're two best friends who have each have one brain cell, but our brain cells are allergic to each other. So they make each other dumber? Yeah, they make each other dumber. <laughs> they do, that is accurate. <laughs> they're 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 so good. I I yeah. Josuke, easy great tier. Um, for sure. Mostly he's probably kinda low on the break tier though, because of the whole like he doesn't yeah. fit into the plot very well. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But he does have a great design though. He also has probably my favorite stand of all time. Oh crazy dice. In terms of stands, he's the only one with a cool power and a good design. Because most stands have one or the other. That's I think Stone Free is also really good. Which one? Stone Free is still... Oh, from, from, part from, from Part 6. I've seen it. It does look cool. I don't know what it does, though. Because I haven't checked out Part uh, 6 yet. It's it basically collapses... It. Yeah, it, it, it pulls apart to become strange. Oh, it and does so that to itself. Okay. Well, it doesn't yeah. tell... Oh, make her weird. Turn into string. That's cool. But there's a lot of stuff that she she does with that stand that doesn't horrendously break its rules. Do we? Can we also appreciate the fact that part four onward they had to make a healer stand just so they can make up for the fact that everyone gets horribly maimed? Yeah, even when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. For fighters. But Joe Skays does. So I, I think it's the best one. <laughs> yeah, no, Joe's gonna make sense. Sure, no, all right, no, it really doesn't. And then we get to Foo Fighter. And... Look, Foo Fighter is nope. cute, okay? Leave her alone. She's I didn't, not like that. I didn't, say she, I didn't say she wasn't. I, I said that her, her, her power is literally to control Plankton. How does that heal you? <laughs> I don't Have you not think. heard of healing Plankton, Isaac? No! Surprising! <laughs> 
that also... <laughs> yeah, and then you'll know. Now JoJo will make sense to you. Because that's the only thing you need to understand JoJo. A biology yeah. class. Oh, yeah, one biology class. Then all of his stuff that he totally gets right 100% of the time will be accurate. Oh, for sure. Like the time I was like... So I know how people say there are parts where they're like, oh man, he just doesn't look up certain information for Stan Powers. He just kind of does it. I, I never ran into that in terms of him spouting information that was just wrong until in part four when uh, they meet, uh, spoilers, they meet a ghost girl. And uh, they point out, man, we can't take him down though for your death because that was over five years ago. And that breaks statute of limitations. And I'm like, wait. No, that's wrong. There is no statute of limitations on murder cases. And I had to look it up if in Japan it's different. And no, there is no statute of limitations on murder cases. So I was like, wait a minute. It's for the drama. Okay. Yeah. Is it? Because it doesn't really play any part of, the, of, of anything. It's just a line that Rohan says. And I only remember it because I was like, wait a minute, that's just wrong. Yeah, the, 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 according to Rocky, I guess. Uh, are, are we sure this is, a, like, actual Japan, though? I need to no, no. I, well, no, because it's part four, so it's Italy. No. No, no. that's part five. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, Morio is Japan. Okay. So, no. I mean, I would assume so. It's Either way, I, I guess Morio... I guess Morio is the only place in Japan where there's a statute of limitation on murder cases. <laughs> well, what a place to live. All right, next next one we got is uh, uh, Kaguya-sama from Kaguya-sama Love is War. Love is War. That's not even a question. What do you th you you agree? You also think she's great. I'd put her in good, but I will also agree and say great. She is great. She just had what I've seen. Amazing moments in that show where I I had to pause it like every two seconds because I could not get a handle on just the fucking shit that she was doing. To, to clarify, Zach has seen only two episodes in his defense. It's oh true. God, so you have you seen the cat ear thing? Yes. But but not the I have not seen the episode, but I've seen it. Oh my god. When I watch that in with the English dub, mind you. I also yeah. watch English, so it's fine. I don't I don't remember exactly what she says, but it's something like in like a very like oh with your kitty but it's her like losing her goddamn mind. Because uh, they put cat ears on the president, and she's just madly in love with him. Yeah. So she's just no, no, she's not. What are you talking about? She would just be okay if he asked her out. Oh yeah, right. Of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she is not madly in love with the uh, with the councilman. He, he, she would just be okay if he asked her out. He would. She would. Uh, uh, <laughs> she, she would if he groveled for her. She would accept oh, yeah, him. Right. <laughs> yeah. Him yeah, yeah. She would. Watching, who also has seen the show, Miyuki is also arguably the main character in terms between those two. Yeah, but I just wanted to be called to Kaguya because I frankly would just rank her higher than Miyuki, but not by a ton. Yeah. Also, she's her name's in the title, and the show focuses on her a lot, and the fans do too. I wonder why. Um, that's true yeah um, but they're they're both really good uh, we had to split hairs with another one on our list later uh, so uh, and, yep but I agree we should put her in great for even the bits I've seen of her she's pretty great she's cute she's funny uh, and oh so innocent and it's great mm. you 
think she's innocent? Uh, it, I mean, it really depends on your definition of innocent. I mean, she didn't know what, uh, uh... Oh, that, that, that kind of innocent, sure. Yeah, yeah. Every other definition of innocent, no. Oh, no, yeah, I meant sexually, but not, not, not... That's true, she is very manipulative. We, we understand. Kaguya has definitely committed crimes. Yeah, she's... <laughs> Because she's rich and she can get away with it. Exactly. All right. So next, we've got the Joe Star that everyone wants to talk about. We got to talk about Joseph Joe Star. Pop a freight tier. Without question, he just take battle tendencies, put it on his back, and he carries it the whole fucking way. Uh, the only the only reason I also agree he has to be at the top of great. I put him on great anyway because he's so fun. But yeah, he does li like battle tense. He's is honestly not great, but the reason it is anyway is because he is such an amazing main character. Well, I I actually talked with our friend Mike for the audience, uh, and uh, we actually agreed. No, battle tendency actually has one of the stronger plots because it actually has an actual plot that <laughs> is just executed in a fairly fine way whereas yeah. most other jojo plots are horrendously meandering uh, yeah that's fair every other character in part two is just really fucking weak yeah stroheim's fun but there's not much to him wamu is the only one i would rank above okay and even then not by much he might be, make like bottom of the I'd probably still put him in okay. I'd put him like top of okay though, because he's at I least. He deserves it's good, but yeah, he is. He is a fairly generic archetype, but I feel like he's a fairly generic archetype executed fairly well. Yeah, that's true. Also um, made in the 1980s, so it was definitely a time where that trope wasn't as tropey. Yeah. It's just when we yeah, experienced it, it was definitely very tropey. Every other character in that show is either completely forgettable or okay. What about Smokey Smokey Jones? Joe? What was his name? You're nailing we it. Weirdly enough, Smokey is actually probably one of the stronger characters, and that's really <laughs> just kind of down to his limited screen time. He doesn't have enough time for his one-note character to really feel tiring compared to every other one-note character who's there for way longer. I mean, as long as we can agree uh, Santana is the best villain, then we're good. Best JoJo villain. Yeah, that's why they put his picture on the fucking pillar, like a foot below every other pillarman's. <laughs> he's yep. contributing. Yeah, he's contributing, exactly. He's there. What do you think, hon? Where would you put Joseph Joestar? Grandson of Jonathan... Worst character in J-Stars. Oh my god! Yeah, oh my, oh my. See, he doesn't do that in part in part too much, though. No, his actually his bit in part two, I'm actually still very sad he never brings back. Because it was one of the coolest things I, I've seen in anime. The oh, fact your that, next life will be. Yeah, the fact that he is so smart. He does bring that back, though. Does he really? When he does, just uh, he has his own episode as Old Man Joseph in oh, Egypt. Oh, the arm, the arm thing, the arm episode. Yeah, where is it? He effect? does do his, your next line will be. The, yeah, that well, that episode's good at least. But I man, mean, it, the, yeah, the fact that he's so smart and clever that when he, the the Iraqi found the best way to show that he has completely figured out his opponent is have him literally know what they're going to say next every time, and I'm like, that's. Just the most badass way to show that you figured out your opponent. And the fact that no villain ever, uh, like, is always shocked by it every time, too. <gasps> and, and the fact that All-Star Battle made that a mechanic. That he literally has a counter where he, if you attack him, he... And he has a unique taunt for every character in the game. I, I know it's also in the uh, fucking... The Jojo fighter, actually, because I have I don't have Eyes of Heaven, I have whatever the first yeah, one is. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about. Does. Yeah, 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 All Star Brawl, or Star All Star Battle, yeah. Oh, uh, I thought you were still talking about J Stars. No, J Stars, he's just terrible. I don't know why. They just gave him the worst moveset in the game. 
and he does no damage. Yeah, he somehow is not the best character in the game despite owning a gun. <laughs> he does have. He's the only character in that one in that uh, in J Stars with a gun. Because he has a Tommy gun. Yeah, versus Ryo Saiba in Jump Force, who's like the best character in the game because he has a gun. He has a bunch of guns. See, <laughs> see, Joseph. Joseph wasn't packing enough. He needed more heat. Uh, so um, our next boy is Naruto Uzumaki. He's good. He's not great. He's good. His character arc meanders a lot. I never and watched by Naruto. The... Uh, yeah, by, by the end, his character arc is long since completed, but the show's still going. The show's still going. <laughs> I try and get out, but they keep pulling me back in. Uh, I can agree with Naruto being good. I, I, I think. Out, but they keep making me write new chapters. He is overrated, that's for sure. But Naruto, I think the reason he's a good main character is because, at the very least, his bits are usually, like, outside of the early stuff, early on, like, you know, a lot of other characters had more interesting moments. But by the time, like, shipping comes around, all the best stuff comes from Naruto. Like, Sasuke yeah. too, but, like, they're both, like, the main characters by that point. Until Sasuke's character arc becomes so com comically muddled that... <laughs> it just makes it a trash character. Yeah. But hey, you know, whenever he's on screen is when things actually have progress in the story. So I guess I guess at least he's important. There's that. Alright, so we're okay all okay with him being somewhere in good tier. Yeah. What do you think, hon? Strong. Overrated. No? Good's too high for him? No, Overrated high. is good tier. So uh, your your testimony will be thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> uh i forget her name it's the chick from uh from uh psychopaths akane akane sunamori akane sunamori i've seen like two episodes of psychopaths uh I, I would i will fight anyone who says she is not a great character um <laughs> don't I don't think Isaac thinks he's, she's a great character. I actually she's a had phenomenal stopped, character. I hadn't stopped her to really think about character. where to rank her. She's definitely in good tier and nothing lower, <laughs> and definitely in high good tier. I'd say low great tier. Low great. So below Josuke. Morgan, what do you think? You see that stronger feelings? I I would say she's. I probably like her more than Josuke, but I feel like I'm a little biased just because um, strong female characters. Yeah, I know she's the, the innocent cop who doesn't take shit from nobody. Well, in season one, she's like the rookie who yeah. questions everything, but then if, as it goes on, and it becomes a... like she really is the leading force behind a lot of stuff. Gotcha. She has seen more psychopaths than I have. I watched the first season. I was not digging the second season, so I did not continue. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, as a sci-fi protagonist, questioning everything is pretty important. Well, the big reason I'm not sure where to place her is because in the first season, she's more the point of view character than the main character. Yeah. The one who's but, mostly pushing the plot along is what's his it, name, Koga? Is cool criminal cop guy. Yeah. yeah. Whereas she is the character who is watching the series of events and pursuing them as well. But Koga's like Is his name Koga? What the fuck is his name? Morgan, what's his Morgan? name? I'm I'm looking it up right now because <laughs> you said Koga and I'm like, that's not right, but what is it? <laughs> I mean, he's the one with the cool fights. That's all I know, and I don't know his name. Um, all all I know about this Kogami. Kogami. Shinya Kogami. Shinya Kogami. Yeah. So the it's only like... thing I know about her is she's in a fighting game called Nitro Plus Blasters, because she's an assist in that game. That's all about like visual novel, like light visual novel characters. I don't remember. 
she's a support character. All she does is come in and use her uh, her gun, which I forget its name. Um, uh, the Punisher or something simple like that. I saw it earlier. Like it starts with a D. Oh, okay. Uh, so if she comes in and shoots somebody, it just stuns them. But if you shoot, if uh, she comes in and shoots somebody and kills them, uh, like a special effect will appear, and then you'll get a trophy for uh, like saying a termination authorized or whatever. So she... okay, one, that's awesome. Two, the gun's name is called the Dominator. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> oh, that <ain't> gross. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I, it was the one thing I hated about it. I was like, why is it called the Dominator? Because <laughs> it's so badass. <laughs> I literally spent zero amount of my time thinking about the name of that. <laughs> the dude. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next we got uh, the the top of great tier, uh, Izuku Deku Midoriya. So why is he that high, uh, Isaac? Wrong. Incorrect. <laughs> He's top of good tier. <sighs> Look, and here I've had this discussion before. Here's the problem. Midoriya has great character development for the first, second, and half of the third season, and he doesn't get an ounce of character development all the way through the current run of the anime. Yeah, but he's got friends, and he has to protect them. I like his ha- friends more than him. He's a best boy. Literally, half of the run of the anime right now, he has not had any character development. He's had the same arc of I must save small child. I know, and... Isaac, how can he call himself a hero if he can't save one child in trouble? Well, he did save one child, so I guess he could call himself a hero. No, no, but, like, what if he can't save that other child over there who can't cross the street by himself? He saved, what, like, three children at this point now? Uh, if you count the movies... He saved four. He saved four. Wait, yeah. Yeah, he saved four. There's two in there. There's the little boy. Yeah. Uh, and I, then, uh, I mean, he saved other yeah. people, but in terms of actual children, there's four. And yeah, Ari. Yeah, and Ari. And it's like... you can tell yeah, which I one is people. the most memorable by yeah. There's the two in the movie, the boy, and the one we're gonna name. The boy's I mean, name yeah. is Coda. I, I, say, I said Coda. <laughs> no, you didn't. But you yeah, just said the bo- the boy. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, d- I don't remember the two kids' already, names. More Coda. Yeah, the boy from the movie is more Coda, and the girl is the skeptical character. Also Coda, just the other half of Coda's personality. Yeah, that's true. What do you think, Ashton? Yeah. Where, where would you put Izuku Deku Midori? Where would I put... Um... I'll, I'll go with that, what you, where you guys put you it. Think top of good? I'll accept it. I'm outvoted. He's just very important to me personally. I'm not knocking that. Like, I just... I'm I'm very stuck on the stagnated character development he gets. Like, I get they had to push other aspects of the narrative, but they really needed to give him something to explore other aspects of his personality and develop other parts of his character if that was going to be the case. And they really just don't. Yeah. Overhaul is a very long version of the muscular fight. Which is funny, because, man, people and, love that part. Like, a lot. I mean, the overhaul... Here's the thing. Overhaul would have hit all that much harder if he had not already had the muscular fight. Because <laughs> they both prove the exact same thing. Yeah. How can he How can he call himself a hero if he doesn't save a small child in trouble? Um, the only difference is the muscular fight had him also proving how important heroes are to the, like saving people the overhaul was just was you know he just had to save the little girl i mean but then he had to save the little girl afterwards because he couldn't just save her body he had to save her heart yeah that's true hey the uh that's still like one of the best things though i'm not shitting on that the rock I'm just concert saying all of it's just... beautiful I'm saying it's just a more drawn out version of that same character arc for Midoriya. Yeah. I mean, Ashley knows why Midori is so important to me. Who's 
Um, yeah. The character made me realize I was bi. He, he was very important to That's me. Fair. Yeah. Just, we're not gonna go there. Um. <laughs> what? I was about to make a and I realized how insensitive that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. It was probably better. It's probably a good idea. I All apologize right. for even thinking it. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well, our next character is probably the first one we're going to have not not only uh, good things to say about. Um, this next one is Natsu Dragneel. Trash. Drag his ass down to bad tier. Trash. Uh, I have no idea who this is. So Natsu Dragneel. And he's the main character of Fairy Tale. A uh, an anime. And uh, that's, that's what you and that's what I can say about it, because it's the most generic shonen anime ever, and the only reason it got super popular is because it came out of a time where nothing was coming out. There okay. are going to be people who will fight us on this, but I will stand by. Fairy Tale would not have gained the popularity it, it did, if not for the fact that it came out in the big three era, era where you the know. only shonen that were really out were Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. Dude, literally Kodansha of... comics became super popular just because people were tired of the big three and the old director of Shueisha, like, having the mentality of we need to have only one or two big shows and push them push them to the moon. Yeah. Um... And the, so the, probably the biggest flaw about Natsu is, yeah, he's just a shonen protagonist. He's got spiky hair, he has fire powers, he eats a lot... He's goofy, he's dumb, uh, he has a quirky gimmick, which is his motion sickness. Uh, he's got an overly cool design, like, but that's very simplistic. Um, he fights for his friends, he gets random power-ups whenever he needs to, he usually is the last guy to punch the big villain at the end. Is this the pink-haired guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking at a picture of fairy tale characters, and I'm like, well, it's none of the girls, so... No. Technically, Lucy Hartfelia who is the technically main character, but Natsu is usually considered the main main character. Cause like, I don't like that her last name is Hartfelia. Uh, don't worry. People only like her for one reason. She's the girl. She's the hot girl. No, no, no. no. They like the old girls, too. They like the strong girl and the definitely illegal girl. That's true. For those reasons. That's true. Uh, to be fair, I also like Urza, but it's mostly because she's the only one with, like, a big character. I mean, yeah, Urza's probably the only good character in that show. And even that, it's... Yeah, she's still like just... Ass yeah, she, she's still, like, okay. But, like, compared to the rest of the cast, she's very good. Um. So, yeah. Uh, top of bad... It's probably a fair point. Nothing about him is terrible, but the problem is nothing about him is good or interesting. In fact, when you find out his greater details in his backstory, like the very end of the show, man, is it dumb. Do you think that drags him down to lower and bad tier? The fact that it's... Probably, probably lower and bad. There's uh, always planned. I would put... Yeah, there's always planned, for sure. Just like in Naruto. Um... I would put him lower in bad, but he's already the only one in bad, so I can't put him any lower. And I don't think he's bad enough to be terrible, so. So next one is Edward Elric. He's good. I think we could argue with putting him in great tier. I, I would say great. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm not a big fan of his, but I'd put him in great. Um, I'll put him... Put him... Like you guys gonna have to shot characters I like later on. <coughs> yeah. But I'm trying to be. I think on a like objective writing level, like he is an extremely well written character. He is very well written. I thought I would be the only one that would say that, so I said good. Oh no, he's. I he, like. I'm not a big Full Metal Alchemist fan, but Edward's great. He's you know he's a fun character. He he's got full, like well defined motives, personality. Like I. Honestly, when I know the character's written well, is if he's put in a situation, I could tell what he's going to do based only on what I've seen of him. Like, I could just figure out 
because I know who he is as a character. Uh, for me, it's really just, can I see the cogs working in their brain? Can I, like, see them being put in a difficult position and see how, like, they're struggling to come up with something, you know? That's really, like, that kind of internal mechanic thing. I like how your opinion on Fullmetal Alchemist is, like, the inverse of my opinion about Demon Slayer. They're not inverse, but, like, our feelings. Uh, Whereas Demon Slayer is a show that I'm like, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a solid show, but it's nothing fantastic. But I like it disproportionate to that. Versus Full Metal Alchemist, that you're like, no, it's a great show, but I don't like it that much. Yeah, that, that that's pretty fair. Like Demon Slayer, I actually feel pretty much the same as you do. But uh, in terms of Full Metal Alchemist, no, yeah, it's it's a case where I'm like, I acknowledge it's a great show. There's a reason people say it's one, the best anime of all time, and I'm not even arguing that uh, as a fact i just don't like it i i would say full metal is <coughs> sort of i'm pretty biased because it was like my first real anime like oh, i watched sailor young. moon and pokemon but like yeah first real anime that i watched probably before i was old enough to because <laughs> i want to say i was like seven <laughs> Oh, who, who here hadn't watched a show that they were definitely not old enough to watch when they saw it? Dude, I watched Tenshi Muyo when I was like six. Dude, I watched Golden Boy when I was twelve. <laughs> nice. What about you, Ashley? That was definitely not appropriate. I didn't even get most of those jokes. Yeah, but remember, I was a good Christian girl oh, going so to church. Dad was Christian. a youth pastor. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's fair. Good Christian girl. Mm. I went to That's church twice a week. Devil in D and D. Joey, you're not supposed to watch. My dad yeah. played D and D. Uh, that was more. No, I said you're playing the devil because you're a deeply. Like adult swim in general. Yeah. No. Just adult comedies Adam. when you're a young. Man. That's fair. I did that too, but I was more a preteen at the time. So we're all, we're all in agreement. I'd say he's probably mid grade tier for. I know. We get through. I'm putting him below Josuke because of my personal biases. I I think that's a fair place to put him. Yeah. Above. At that point, I feel like it's personal preference, yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't argue strongly either way on that one. Uh, next is uh, the face of a lot of controversy. Uh, we've got Son Goku. Um, Rex. I've never like, seen honestly, him. he's got to go in okay tier. Because this character is all over the place. And we have to talk about like the whole of him. Well, cause in GP, he's the purest okay. possible asshole. In fucking super, he's the irresponsible earlier, moron. In Dragon Ball Z, he's kind of both at times, just not as strongly. <laughs> he's mostly not he on. Was, he's mostly not there a lot of DBZ. Yeah, he's only really a good character in the original Dragon Ball oh. run. Well, I'd say. I mean, I like him I in most see runs. Why that's but I'd say he's great consistently in OG like Dragon Ball. Whereas in... Like in OG Dragon Ball, I would rate him, like, top of good tier. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Because in Z, like, he's hit or miss. He's also not on screen a lot of times. GT, he, he like... He, I don't know, man. GT, I, I can hardly tell what his fucking character... My planet is about to explode, and I'll just fuck over him. Yeah, well, he definitely doesn't have a sense of agency, that's for sure. For context, Morgan, in Dragon Ball GT, beginning of Dragon Ball GT, they gotta go around the universe searching for these Dragon Balls, or else the actual planet Earth will explode. And yet they fuck around every single planet they go to. In some cases, just Goku playing around. to fucking shove every planet he goes to out of orbit, and somehow it takes them an episode or two to fucking get anything done. Yeah, that's not and then in Super, he's just... he's In Super, the writers confuse the fact that he's supposed to be a naive character with he's supposed to be a brain-dead stupid character. Yeah. So, yeah, I would not put him, as a whole, the whole franchise, I would not put him over over, uh, over okay tier. I'll accept that. And that's being generous, considering how bad he is in Super and GT. Yeah. Bye. That being said, like, I'm not going to fight you too much if you have a different opinion. Like, we'll, we'll find a middle ground. I, I don't really. Um, with Goku, I've... I mean, even growing up, he was never my favorite anyway. Uh, as I gotten older, I like Goku to be 
like whenever there's a big crossover or something i always want goku to be there but whenever i'm like say i'm playing a game and if goku is a big crossover game when goku's there i tend to like him being there or playing as him or whatever but whenever i'm playing something dragon ball related he's like one of the last characters i want to play <laughs> and uh yeah it's just kind of how it is it's like he's the face of dragon ball and i think that's sick but he's never been my favorite part of dragon ball And yeah, the, right. the writing inconsistencies, even amongst Akira Toriyama himself writing the same character, is pretty silly. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, um, okay, Tier? Is yep. that where we're at? Yep, okay. Next is right. Haruhi from Oran High School Host Club. Oregon, have you seen Oran? Yes, I have. Okay. I was about to say, I feel like we've talked about that, but not any time recently. Uh, it's really good. I feel like we really should have been a little more biased with what we chose. Yeah. Or uh, a little more uh, judgy, because we picked a lot of shows that we just love. Yeah. I would and so I feel like... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I honestly think... Haruhi would probably That's a only be like good. That's fair. Um, I don't know where I'd really put Haruhi personally. I really like Haruhi a lot. Um, yeah, she, the point. I would say she probably also. I'd say high good tier. Because I think she also has a good aspect of being the straight person for all the goofiness of the rest of the club it's just been so long since i've actually watched oran host club that i'm like just thinking of like what i remember about it i'm like i remember haruhi being good here's my feelings about haruhi haruhi is one of those rare examples in harem anime where i'm like yeah i could see why people would like this character and why there would be a bunch of people who are interested in dating this character <laughs> Says. And I feel like, yes, I get, like, I'm a straight guy, so yeah, I would like the girl. But with a lot of male main character uh, harems, there is a almost universal opinion that the, char the main character is just blank. They're not super interesting. They're just some fucking loser who's there to be a self-insert. Yeah, unless, you know? unless they're just, in some cases, just a bad person. Or, or they are a bad person. Like, there are exceptions to this. I think Radma's a good character for that because most of the women who he's technically romantically involved with in any regard, there's, like, a fucking stupid reason for it, and it's not just every woman has fallen deeply in love with him. No, it's only, like, one that actually just fell deeply in love with him. Well, Shampoo's only there because, by racist Chinese rules, because she lost to him in combat, she has to marry him. One was an arranged marriage. Another one was an arranged Another marriage. Marriage. Yeah, Ukyo and Akane are both by arranged marriage. Uh, t to be fair, Tendo's sister actually just wants to bone him. Yeah, th that's the one I was thinking of. Like, there is one who absolutely does like him, and then like the rest just kind of are by coincidence. <laughs> Man, I would fire. <laughs> oh, Mama's and. and dad a parent and also from life if like if i was ranma and i found out my dad uh arranged a marriage for me for a bowl of rice and a fucking fish yeah he pawned off his son on multiple occasions yeah and one time literally just for a bowl of rice and a fish yeah and they totally uh <laughs> hey he his went, main rival fell in love with him too just his girl um, version then he had to fucking join a ramen delivery race just to fucking win his own betrothal. Yeah. Damn. Sucks to be him. Honestly, yes. It really does suck to be Ranma, and he would agree with I mean, you. Ranma makes at least 50% of his problems. In fairness, his dad makes the other 50%. Yeah, because he's also a huge dickhead to everybody. And that's why I like Ranma as a main character, because... He's a dickhead. He's not just this generic fucking 
whitewashed fucking cardboard cutout is okay. an actual person who has a personality and most of his arranged marriages are actually just arranged like the women have very little say in that yep but just no, as much he, as he does he's just a lazy dickhead who messes with and picks fights because he has a lot of fun beating the shit out of weaker opponents Isn't which is pretty much everybody the panda? yes his dad is the panda he doesn't. He's not always a panda. Oh. Um, but he does turn into a panda. Our next character, though, um, is Tanjiro Kamino. Which, honestly, as someone who is not the biggest fan of Demon Slayer, who thinks it's good and I do enjoy it. I don't know. I think it's boring. Um, I don't like. Yeah, well, it, I don't think your opinion matters. <laughs> I think parts of it are boring, especially the first. Like, the first half of season one was pretty damn boring. See, I respect your opinion, Zach. <laughs> That's so mean. I, 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 no, I, I agree entirely in that regard. The first part of season one is boring. I'm sorry, Borgia. Ta- Tanjiro is just not a good enough character uh, to carry the show on his own. He needs his cast to play off of. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is once there's, like... Uh, Zenitsu and Inosuke get introduced, it kind of rolls a little better. Yeah. Rolls a lot better. Yeah, I would, I would also say a lot. Like, I'm still not crazy about the show, but definitely in terms of just pure improvement, it gets way better when there's more characters. <laughs> That's why I put um, Tanjiro at, honestly, bottom of a K tier. He's, he's just a good boy, and that's about it. There's really not much to him. I, I would say move him to bottom of good tier. I, I would say below good bottom of good okay that's that's fine like i'm not gonna fight too strong because i also voiced like Tanjiro doesn't have really much of a character arc but he also is a device for every other character's development in that show so it's like well he's not a good character per se but he's a good main character because he is still a driving force in his series i guess that's fair i i just think it's boring Honestly, his, his biggest flaws is boring. Lisa Nitsu, I don't like, but that's because he has more of a character for me to react to, I guess. Just uh, wait till you get to Uzi. You're going to have so much fun. I'm sure I will. It's all right. I got a week off. I'm on vacation. I'm probably going to catch up oh, on Demon yeah. Slayer. Uzi is so good. Stream and do a bunch of other stuff. I'm very excited. Yeah, Uzi and Rengoku, I think, are Morgan's two favorite characters, aren't they? I mean. Yeah, but. Ringoku I'm biased so about Rengoku. Though. Is it because he's hot? No, it's because I... Uh, hey, it's a pun. Char- wow, yeah, no. Uh, it's 100% just because, oh, this character has a fire motif? Guess fucking what? What? <laughs> That's valid. I, like, anytime a character has a fire motif, I'm just like, oh, congratulations, you are now my favorite. Oh, why is that? This fire are cool, man, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's actually so Natsu's your favorite character, cult, huh? But um, it's generally fire motif characters have a color scheme I really like. They have a design I really like. That sort of bombastic personality. Yeah. Ace is pretty freaking great, so I can't disagree with that. But I've never Ace been a big a fan a... of Sabo, honestly. Ace is a character from One Piece. He is. He's oh, Luffy's okay. type. Oh, I remember him from that YouTube video we watched forever ago. What, baby? Yeah, we were watching uh, Until They Not Mark's One Piece videos. And then they got taken what down. About, what? Oh, Sabo. Yeah, Sabo does look a lot like Sanji. I, I, I don't know why, but he does. Um, yeah, Ace he is great. Like Sanji if Sanji didn't give up on life. <laughs> I mean, he had a good reason. I mean, I didn't say he didn't. I said that's what he looks like. <laughs> that is fair. I don't know. Sabo's crazy popular, but he, I just never got not never liked him that much. I still don't. I don't know why. I just never I mean, he's got a fun, poppy personality, so I get it. And, you know, all the other stuff that goes with it, even if it's not the most uh, gracefully written. But Ace is I don't great. Spoil too much are, we still, are we still talking about Rengoku or One Piece? One Piece. We, we need to actually move on, because we've gotten very far away from Tanjiro, which was actually the subject here. You're right. We gotta go to the next character. No. What? But before the next 
character. Yeah. You know, it is is Sabo just Sanji with a talking head? No, no. As Isaac put it, it's Sanji, but he hasn't given up given up on life yet. No, I heard that. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. But why? Uh, I'd explain to you, but it would spoil a lot of One Piece. Oh, okay. So I'll then talk about it later. Explain to me later. Yeah, I'll talk about it later. Yeah. Uh, so our next character is Ichigo Kurosaki. Oh man, talk about bottom of okay tier. I would put. I have no idea who it is. I'd put him at top of bad <laughs> tier. <laughs> I put him top of bad. I don't. He's point one away from each other in rating. <laughs> he's like, uh, oh, I mean, it really depends on which angle you come at it from. He is a perfectly serviceable main character for much of the beginning of the series. Can Rukia be the main character? It's just after you get out of the Soul Society arc. No. Okay, his character depth never. He doesn't get any deeper. He goes through no real new challenges. He has little to no motivation until one of his friends get kidnapped. Yep. That's why his friends get kidnapped every time. Because it's he has no motivations to do anything. <laughs> yeah, so... So they gotta throw I'm giving him of K as like a credit to him being a serviceable main character for the best parts of the show. Which, in fairness, is a good 60 episodes. I'll put him at the bottom of okay, but yeah, I'd put him, yeah, he's just shy of being bad, because, like, he is cool, and that's it. He has very little defining character. He's an angry teenager. See, that's the thing. He's not even angry. He, he could get angry. Yeah. But, like, his anger is not even a defining trait, no, and he has very few defining traits. Yeah. Other than he fights for his friends. That's, I mean, he does do that. I fight my friends. Uh, you know what? I gotta put him at top of bad, because his backstory is also terrible. Much like Natsu's. You know, I can't argue with that, because I forgot about the fact that he is also, uh, as it happens, yeah, he is related to someone of importance in every fucking group of literal existence. Yeah, every time you meet a big thing, turns out, plot twist, the reason he has all these crazy power-ups that come out of nowhere to so he can win every fight... Because he's actually everything. Oh, of yeah. course he is. Okay, so for context, Morgan, you know that scene that people like making fun of in JoJo communities, where Jotaro is like, "Oh, you, uh, you have the same the same type of plat uh, stand as my Star Platinum." You know that whole thing, and then it's like Star Platinum has the same powers as the world. Yeah. Uh, that's Ichigo in every arc. He meets someone new, and he's like, "Oh, you've got the same type of powers as me." And then he has those powers. Yeah. Maybe his powers is just copying other people's powers. <laughs> if that was the case, I would accept it more, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with Zach there. It just so happens he's half everything. <laughs> and that's the twist every time. That doesn't happen until very late in the series, but once it starts, man, it does not stop. No, it, it happens pretty immediately. Well, we first find out about him being part stuff, like, by the, what, like, the fifth season? The third arc? No. Depending on how you want to quantify it, he shows his, his he's going to have hollow powers as early as, like, episode 18 or so. Yeah, but they suggest that some some Soul Reapers do. And that he's part, yeah, him yeah. being part Soul Reaper, uh, hollow is something that comes up later. And then you find out about his dad shortly after the Soul Society arc. Yeah, that was during the, the Iran car stuff. Yeah, and then then, and then you find out about his then every arc. Power. Yeah, then every <laughs> arc after that we give him new powers. So top of bad tier, he's fine, but uh, his writing is pretty god awful. He has no motivations, and his development is I'm everything because I'm God King of this show. Uh, our next character is Inuyasha. Woohoo! Uh, oh, man, we finally got to the terrible tier. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's in terrible he's... tier? You really think so? Do we have, like, no. a neutral? Do we have a neutral? Yeah, it's called okay. <laughs> yeah, it's no, about I, need, I need, like, more neutral. You, like... need, <laughs> you, need true, you need a true neutral. That's not neutral enough. 
it's not neutral enough because okay <laughs> still lends a little too much into well he's not bad but he's okay i'm like no 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 no. that's I, too I positive you need a true neutral like he's not bad but he's not good so he's there all right let's keep up the metrics act me and you yeah since we have this reference is yeah. he worse than ichigo no no he at least has motivations a character and is an angry boy he's bottom of okay tier I'd put him bottom of okay. What do you think, Ashley? You're the big Ichigo uh, Ichigo. I'm not fan. a big Ichigo fan. You're you're a big Inuyasha fan. What do you think? I hate that you guys are all hating on him. <laughs> exactly. I'm not what hating on him? I said I mean, nothing bad about him. Night, uh, honestly, <laughs> Ashley, do you expect me to be any nicer than to say he's okay? Because I didn't expect me to be that nice. I, I make fun of Inuyasha near constantly, mostly as a joke, but also just because it's largely mediocre. But, like, yeah, like, okay, it's nicer than I feel like anyone should have expected out of me when talking about Inuyasha. Yeah. He's not wrong about that. No. So, okay. So, is he okay, Ashley? <laughs> Good, but you guys are like, <laughs> no. For Ashley's feelings, we can put him in the middle of okay. All right, we'll put him in middle of okay, which right now is the bottom because we don't have any other okay people. But he'll be in the really? middle. We only have Goku. Wait, we... Yeah, Goku's the only other person in okay. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I swear we put at least one other person in okay. Well, there's not a middle between one. So, I can't stick him I, in between both. I don't know, because I love Inuyasha so much. I, think I don't know Goku's why I actually considered worse than Inuyasha. it like a really damn. Oh, damn. That is, that is actually a hot take. Like. I'll accept it, though. Inuyasha is at least consistent. Inuyasha that is fair. does not develop at all throughout his series. But every character trait he has is consistent, and he has always written that way. That's true. Even so checking out the extremely long drawn out character arc it's at least straightforward and consistent yeah even Goku checking out yashahime yeah he's he still feels like inuyasha like that's definitely inuyasha he's not really in Whereas, that show though not, not much really. but when he is he feels like the same character where yeah goku pretty much acts different if when you ask who goku is like even in like uh, battle rankings and stuff online there's different versions of goku because you have to know which version you're talking about that's too much mm. yeah there, there's a goku is a un, is basically a now ever since like the late 90s when uh the series ended and internet fans got a hold of him he's really become the blank slate of whatever the cast whatever fans want him to be is kind of what he is yeah which much like yeah, I, Hal Jordan kills his character. And you said I was shitting on your character, Ashley. And here I am putting him above a character from a show I genuinely like. Hell, you almost own the entire manga of it. Yeah, I'm missing one volume of the original run. Well, technically three, but it's a bus. And I have it ordered. I just gotta wait for it to get in stock and come in. Yep. And OG Dragon Ball is one of my favorite anime of all time. It's a good time. It was very fun. It was very fun, and it's... it's quality's you know, a bit garbage, but it's still very good. It depends on what quality you're talking about, and it depends on where in the series you're talking about it. Uh, anytime I think of how bad the animation can be is often like I think of the pirate ship uh, set segment. I actually don't remember that being too bad. Also, like... Yeah, Light Dragon Ball? Square in a random like, stream must see. Arts, King Piccolo, 23rd one, martial arts. Animation can get really fucking slick considering this was 1987 through 89. That's fair. Man, see, it did run for a long time. Ran all the way to 95. Yeah, yeah my... <laughs> me see own. Soul Eater in a tiny square in a random stream must see. <laughs> we're ranking um, all the... Uh, we're ranking anime protagonists. We haven't gotten to... Maka yet. But I like Maka their is uh, screen name. Beep, beep, beep. I agree. Beep, beep, that is a good name. Yeah. I was like, I like the screen name. I think that would be better if it was Beep Boop Bop. I thought that's that just too. me. That's how I first read it. Isaac, I 
like we're ranking anime. Stop criticizing people's usernames. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So next character <laughs> is Jolene Cujo. Best girl. Top of Jolene. <laughs> top, top of great, huh? Yeah. I would die for I, I agree there are three main characters in Soul Eater. However... Technically, Maka Fall is the main character more often. Now, I know Death the Kid takes over for sections of the series, and Black Star is the main character like four episodes, even though he's the best character in the show. We're not talking about them, though. We're talking about best girl Jolene. We are talking about Jolene so for, Cujo. For your context, imagine like Jotaro's ability to be a total badass, but he really wants to be. Yeah. And Joseph's ability to fuck around, and you have Jolie. I mean, it's pretty fun. Right. <laughs> I mean, most yeah. people really I... like Jolene, but uh, are not crazy about her her, her season. Um, I've read slash watched zero of it, so I know nothing. The, the, me uh, either. No spoilers. The ending of part six sucks. But yeah, like two thirds of it is honestly really good. Yeah. Um, no, for me, I mean, it, she's an even numbered huh? Joe star, which means she's automatically good. Mm. So jo Jonathan's My fine, but like, he's a very, you know, you know, he, he doesn't really push the plot forward, he just kind of reacts to everything. Joseph is amazing. Yeah. Jotaro's cool, but is uh, kind of a shitty main character because he does not fucking push a plot along at all unless you count just beating the shit out of the guy who needs to have the shit beat out of him. Granted, all of his moments are really badass and very cool. Yeah, but like, most of the time we're following Kakyo and her fucking Polner doing something stupid. Which we should never follow Kakyo in because he's terrible. Uh, uh, Josuke is amazing. Jordo is... We'll get to him. And then Jolene. We'll also Even get to Jotaro. We haven't talked about him yet. <laughs> Yeah, but it was Jotaro. Like, everyone's got pretty much the same opinion of Jotaro. It's yeah. just whether or not him only really stepping in to beat the shit out of people, whether or not that appeals to you. Okay, beep, beep, beep. I actually oh, like the ending of Soul Eater, and I've read and watched it. I think the anime ending is actually better. But I won't do Maka really Dirty watch. just because of the show. This is based on the character. Yeah, we will get to Soul Eater. I love oh, that. We need to talk to Jolie. They, they really like Soul Eater, man. Jo Jolene, though. No hate. Great. No hate. Uh, I'll, pu jo uh, I'll put her bottom of great, since I have no opinion. I feel like that's not too too harsh. But yeah, I agree. She should be in great tier. Okay. She has cool that's hair. Acceptable. She does have cool hair. We, we got it. We got to We got to You know, we got to roll with the punches. <laughs> Not everyone's gonna have That's an true. opinion or the same. Yeah, well, very. Great tier is a already competitive area for this tier list. I know, beep, beep, beep. Everyone does hate on it. I get it. I'm part of many so Dragon Ball fandoms. I get many hate for my opinions as well because I breathe. How dare you! I like show my anime, hair. So I get shit on time. Yeah, we have opinions on anime. We get shit on on everything. <laughs> I have opinions on Pokemon. Dude, I have opinions on comic books, man. Those people are violent. No, anybody who has an opinion on anything will get shit on. You're right. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you're part of fandoms, like comic books and anime and stuff, man. If you're part of the anime community, and especially the shonen community, yeah. oh, it's toxic. It's toxic. I hate on the show. I'm yeah. not going to shame you for that, for liking Yeah. I don't shame Ashley for liking any Yasha. Yeah, he, does, Ash, he doesn't shame Ashley for liking Inuyasha. She shames Inuyasha for Ashley liking her. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how is Wait, the main character for Oran High School's Club <laughs> on there, but not Edward El No, Edward El looks right here. Yeah, he's in the top. Yeah, he's right here. I know the oh, pictures are a bit weird. Don't worry, he's right here. He's it right. It just doesn't show his head. It just doesn't show his head because his pictures are off. Oh, his face is cut off. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, his face is yeah the cut images off. are pretty funky because they're all converted. No. 100%. I, yeah, uh, Edward's great. No, hey. What's up? It's just like this. 
Yeah, yeah you can see his clapping yeah, hands in his coat. You just can't see his head. <laughs> you can see the rest of his body. Let's see. Um, so our next one, we've got Jonathan Joestar. There's too many the very Joestars first. On here. We've got the first six. He's, he's, he's good. The, he's the top of OK tier. He's, the, uh, he's good. You can put him in good. That's fine. I, I will I will also yeah. put him bottom of good. Um, I love Johnny Finn because Johnny is a different character. Jonathan. Yeah, Johnny sucks. Oh, I hear Johnny's great, but I haven't gotten there yet. Um, Jonathan, however, is just so he's the generic <laughs> shonen protagonist, much like Natsu. The difference is his feels more genuine. Because he doesn't feel generic. He just feels like he's just a main character. He's like a well, good, about... proper gentleman. Yeah, and I love that. The thing about Jonathan that sets him apart from someone else, like for uh, Natsu, it's the fact that we see Jonathan's childhood. We see why he has those values. We see him pick those values up. So when he is the good boy, it's like, yeah, but we we know that to be him. We have seen him is grow. Is from... the one in the beginning? Wait. Versus Gatsu, who it's like, yeah, we just. Guy? No, go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Natsu, it's just like, these are his values, and it's just like, alright, we're gonna get beat over the head with, you know, don't hurt my friends. And we're not gonna really explain any of his character. He's just gonna have this character archetype. It's never really gonna be challenged in any significant way. I mean, Jonathan has to fight his best friend slash brother even if his best friend slash brother is a giant fucking douchebag yes yeah let's not forget that part <laughs> that's an understatement Why? he's a literal evil demon lord vampire <laughs> um and natsu also has one of those except for the vampire part oh the girl in the top right is not a girl at all so that is gintoki sakata from 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 gintama uh here, I'm gonna pull up a quick picture. Gintoki did you pick up a picture? Uh, did you pick up a picture of him when he was uh, no, when the he was unitard? dressed as a woman, or when he actually was a woman? No, no, not it isn't. No, the one the unitard. Who's wearing the unitard? I still love that fucking. I don't know who you're talking gender. about. Gender. All the women become one. All the men become one. Yet. All the men Sorry? immediately fucking fall into being degenerates and using their looks to get shit done. And I mean, all the women literally one? push the world to be a better place. That's uh, that's Toru Honda from yeah, uh, like Fruits that's Basket. Yeah, I can tell that looks kind of like that. Yeah. Well, next character, no, the one on the left of that. Oh, oh, that's uh, that's ha that's um, not Harima. Wait, is it Harima? Yeah, Harima from uh, she's from School Rumble. Tenma. She? Tenma, sorry. I was about to say, Harima's the guy. Yeah, yeah. Tenma. Uh, she's great. We'll we'll get to her soon. That is that is I feel Tenma. Like you're Harima for the main character of School Rumble. I know, but uh, I tried to put both actually, I but like, I, I guess the file didn't work right, so I only have Tenma. I, but I feel like Harima has much more the development over the series. Well, I'll I'll <laughs> I'll do what I did for uh, Gintoki for him. Which I'll have um, to we'll have to talk about Gintoki at some point too, but I got him in the the upper right of great tier. Okay, I thought she looked like Yumeka from Yumeko from uh, K K Kukaguri, the betting anime. Okay, yeah, it's an anime that makes me sad because it's so good. Uh, I've right. never seen it, so I can't I can't acknowledge it. I'm sorry. What's next? It's Ash Ketchum. <gasps> Oh, hell yeah! I put Let's Ash Ketchum go. in here. I had to have an iconic yeah. character that we all know. Ash is a fucking okay. man. He's, he's, he's pretty bad. I mean, he, he breaks the rules of the universe to win. He is, a, I mean, he is an obnoxious yeah, like... cheater and a huge prick to people all the time. And yeah, he literally bends the rules of 
both Pokemon and reality to get his way when he electrocutes a rock by getting it wet. Yeah, and it works that's perfectly. It, that's how it works in Horizon. You make stuff wet, and then it shocks better. Does it really? I, I mean, never yes, tried that. Makes sense. I make a ton of sense yeah. for the rock. Well, well, they're metal, and as we know, metal is immune to electricity. <laughs> He never evolves his Pokemon. That's in... Well, he does evolve some. That's not at all true. He yeah. evolves Charmander to Charizard. Then Charmeleon Charizard. Yeah. Doesn't he have a Greninja, too? Like, that's a whole thing? Yeah, he levels him up to Greninja. No, he evolves plenty of Pokemon. He doesn't evolve his Pikachu. And there is a few Pokemon he doesn't evolve, Pikachu but... Pikachu doesn't want to evolve. That's yeah, the thing. He evolves very few Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. He has a Butterfree and a Pidgeotto. Well, Pidgeotto he caught as a Pidgeotto, so he didn't evolve that one. I'm I'm gonna oh, not budge on Does my Pidgeotto personal. Still evolve? No, he, Pidgeotto he can evolve into Pidgeot, but he catches it as a Pidgeotto and it doesn't evolve any further. No, because no, he gets does. the big bird, and then he leaves it behind. It yeah, does it he, really? he does what he does because the show needs to go on. He he evolves his Pokemon to their final evolution and lets them go because otherwise things would be too easy. See, this is why I'm not going to put him above bad tier for my own personal opinion. Because he himself is constantly at the mercy of whatever the showrunner's needs are. Yes. But he has say. to constantly give up every Pokemon he has <gasps> to get new Pokemon because we need to sell new toys. I mean, like, right. he has to make outlandishly stupid decisions because the show needs to be in a new region and sell new merch. Okay, so let's see. What Pokemon Sorry. does he currently have? He has Bulbasaur. He had a Charmander that evolved into Charizard. Had a Krabby that became Kingler. Has a Muck. Has 30 Tauruses. Snorlax. Heracross. A Chikorita he made into Bailey, but never evolved again. Cyndaquil into Quilava. Totodile never evolved. Noctowl. An egg that he hatched and evolved all the way to Donphan. A Talo that became a Swallow. A Trico he got into Sceptile. A Corphish. Torkoal. A snow runt he made into a Galalee, a Starly he made into a Star Raptor, a Turtwig he made into Torterra, a Chimchar he made into Invernape, Weasel, Gligar that became Gliscor, Gibble, P Dove that became an Unpheasant, Oshwat, Tepig that became a Pig Knight, Snivy, an egg that became a Scraggy, Sawaddle that became a Levani, Politoed, Rog and Rolla that became a Bulldor, Krokorok became a Crocodile. Fletchling became Talonflame, Halucha, and then Egg became a Noivern. And then he's got a bunch of Pokemon he left with other people, like Rowlet, Lycanroc, which was originally Rockruff, Litten, that became Incineroar, Mel Melton, that became a Melmetal. Uh, his, uh, he didn't actually own the Mimey. Um, Squirtle, Pi Primeape, his Caterpie that became Butterfree. Oh, his Pidgeot did become Pidgeot, you're right. Um, Lapras, Froakie that became his Greninja slash Ash Greninja. Um, Which I don't understand that at all. Uh, yep. It's it's a lore thing. It's in the games too. Gumi that became a Gudra. Poi Pole that became a Naganandel. Yep, that one. You're nailing it. Sea uh, King, Buzzwool, St Stakataka, Formosa, Raticate, Abby Palm, Beedrill, Haunter, an egg that became a Larvitar, his Rotom Pokedex. Nebby, oh, that's the sun po legendary. I don't remember its name. Sharpedo, Tauros. It's Nebby. You just read it. <laughs> uh, is that its name? It's not Nebby. Yeah, the little the little puffball. Yeah, no, it's Nebby. called no, it's called Sol Solgaleo. No, that's the lion. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, he nicknamed it. About. He nicknamed it Nebby. Because isn't Nebby the little puffball that turns yeah, into yeah, Solgaleo? Yeah, yeah, he he nicknamed his Solgaleo Neb Nebby. Weird. Yeah. Anyway, and then he had a bunch of temporary Pokemon that just like he partnered up with from time to time, and he became best friends with a bunch of random Pokemon, and that's it. <clears throat> yeah, Nebby was actually apparently the child of Solgaleo, of an older Solgaleo and Lunala, who grew into a Solgaleo. Sure. Yep. That happened in the anime. 
Uh, so Isaac says top of bad. Morgan says bottom of okay. Ashley, what do you say? You literally share a name. I know. But what do I think of myself? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Got it. Top of terrible. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have so much nostalgia for Pokemon just because it was my childhood. Yeah. It, it's still my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are aware. Yeah, yeah we but know. we're just talking about Ash. But just Ash, not Pikachu. Yeah. Oh, well, I am going to talk about it. You fucking <clears throat> cover my table of Legos while we're trying to fucking run D D combat again. I'm keeping the Legos because they're cool. He will steal your Legos. I will. I'm a kleptomaniac. It's actually a problem. Isaac, you said to me before that you hate Legos. Yes. No, I was confused. Cool. They're Pokemon cool. Legos, so it's fine. <laughs> no, yeah. actually, specifically, I said I hated those Legos because I saw them in the store. I'm like, man, that's like me. But he'll own it. So what is it, Ashley? Oh, I will. Well, it's a good thing that they're not actually Legos and they're nano blocks. No, okay, no, I don't want But what about Ash? But what about Ash? The world turns to Ash. Jack, what happens if you put Legos into an oven and set it to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for six hours? <laughs> they would melt and then catch fire and burn. Oh, God. Fire extinguisher in hand, got it. It's probably a good idea. Okay, where are we putting Ash, though? Like, in all seriousness. Yeah, we need to move on. Morgan's right. I'll put him top of bad. Why do you guys hate him? He's just not a very good character. <laughs> I don't hate him. I just don't think he's good. I mean, he's kind of like Goku. He has to actively make bad decisions so that the show can continue. I, if, it again, Ash would be next to Inuasha in true neutral for me. He exists. Yeah. All right. So next up is Kazuma. Kazuma Sato from Kono Super. Yeah. He, he's somewhere in good tier. He's I, I would say he's like, like, just like mid good. Yeah, he do, he doesn't have the depth or anything to be an amazing character. But for for a comedic main character who's a piece of shit uh, and has to deal with the dumbass people that he deals with every day, I feel like he's a well-rounded character who is funny. It's crazy. This show's what? finally continuing after so long. Well, there was a movie two years ago, but, like, yeah, COVID definitely set things back. Yeah. I can't to get to that movie. Yep. Don't have much to input. Only watch like two episodes. Want to watch more? He's very funny though. Yeah, you want to watch more? Uh, wanna <laughs> I don't want to count the nine foot pole. I know. We we binged what the whole first season in like a weekend, Isaac. Yeah, we did. I didn't expect it to go over that well with you, but we kept going. It's a good dumb show just to put on if I don't want to think. <laughs> oh no, that's why I like it so much. You can just kind of always watch it. Nice. I just remember watching it with you, and there just being me looking at you, just saying "What the fuck," and you just laughing. See, Isaac, this is when are you when are you coming so we can watch the Gintama movie and do the same thing? Yeah, but I say that's like actually like good, good. It is good, good. <laughs> and it's uh, dumb. That's not like that's not like Kondo Super where it's dumb. Also, I like how you're like, man, you're spending time with your girlfriend, but you're not watching a movie with me. Oh, no, I was more wondering when you were going to come do that. I didn't mean instead. I, know, I, I honestly didn't know it was on the table. Yep. That's fair. I'll be waiting. I know, we'll have it's later. It, it's <laughs> okay, Zach. I, I accept that Isaac has boyfriends. Ashley accepted that for me a long time ago. What do you think? Our next character is Kazuto Kirito Kirigaya. That's too many K names. 
Well, his name is Kazuto Kirigaya, and he calls himself Kirito because it's his online handle, because it's a combination of the end of his first name and the start of his last name. Who is this? This is Kirito, the main, you know, the main character of Sword Art Online. KKK confirmed. Yeah, KKK confirmed. Kazuto <laughs> that, That's him. That's, it's, he's technically not wrong. No. <laughs> uh, Banana switch. <laughs> so, so, uh, so the thing about Kirito not is he has little to no personality. He's very much a blank slate, so girls can latch on to him, and so he can, uh... I thought it was so guys could latch on to him. Yeah, it's like a projection thing. No, no, I know. Metaphorically. But it's so girls can latch on to him, literally. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So he could be his little harem boy. Yeah. Uh... Outside of that, yeah. there's not much to him. He's just an. Back. You uh, know my feelings. I'm gonna leave this to you. Uh, we'll put top of terrible. It's pretty bad. Oh, oh I didn't expect him to go that low. <laughs> He's pretty awful. Uh, I like him a lot though, but I can acknowledge when I, something I, is bad. I did not want to shit on him more because I knew I used to be terrible about being an asshole about sword art. No, I know it's a lot of the thoughts, but you know what I mean. Guy will latch onto him when he has the long hair. That's true. That's true. When he gets his long hair, I latched on him to him pretty good. Um, See, here's here's the thing. I'll shit on Inuyasha more because I at least have some nice things to say about Inuyasha. (laughs) I just don't have any nice opinions outside. Ooh, your art's pretty good. Uh, I'll it's always true, state dude. the first arc is very good, and nothing else is, and no part of that is good because of Kirito. It's just good. He has no uh, he, any main character could have made the show even a bit better. But I mean, looks that's, great. That's Story's a good. good. Definition. That's a good definition for what a terrible tier is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He if doesn't need to. Be... But like if. Kirito being such a blank slate, boring character makes him terrible. What does that say about all these characters who we have actual negative things to say about? Mm, That's a fair point. Like, we have actual negative, like, show-impacting problems with Goku and Ash. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see what you mean. Whereas, like, Kirito at least progresses the plot even if he himself is a blank slate of a character. But the issue, with, the issue with Ash is it's nostalgia. That's why he's higher up. <laughs> he's still on the I top mean, of bad. <laughs> that's no, that's some pretty weak nostalgia. Bad, honestly, <laughs> um, I'd put. Uh, I guess I can agree. I'd put Kirito bottom of bad. Then he's probably he's not, he's really not that terrible. I just I just acknowledge that he's not good, like at all. I still like him. I play him in games that he's in, and uh, I like the I first like arc of his show. anything worse about him than there is about other characters on this list. He's probably you just the most white. I'm not running this tier list. Yeah, because you would ignore what we have to say. Exactly. <laughs> it's my tier list now. <laughs> it look very different. Um... Well, this tier list is on tierlistmaker.com, so if anyone wants to go on there and make it using the very limited amount of characters we chose, you, you were totally free to. Oh, it saves on there after you do it? Oh. So, next one. I was wondering how all those were made. It's Koro Sensei, who is technically not the main character of the show, but he is the driving... He's like on, uh, every straight? aspect of the show centers around him, and Nagis is more the per, the... He's more of the yeah, he's he's where we get the story from, like who we see the story from perspective. But like, the story is oh, yeah. all about Koro, one hundred percent. Again, Koro Sensei is the main character. Nagisa is a point of view character. Yeah, very much so. Which is not a problem. I actually like Nagisa a lot too. But Koro is really like the focus of the entire show, without I think question. Nagisa is positive, indifferent on. I think he's great. Like, I don't have sh- but I feel more warmly than anything. I think his I, his growth is very intriguing. I, like I think if you look it up, it's like Koro Sensei, N- Nagisa, and Karma are the technical three main characters. 
Which is funny, because Karma's not even in the first, like, four episodes. I mean, that's fair. But he's great. Vegeta he's not, he's the most like popular main... That is very true. Um, and he's not in the first 160 car uh, episodes. Oh, uh, yeah, he's not in the first, uh, it, all of Dragon Ball. Yeah, he's not in the first 16 volumes of the series. Actually, 17. Wait, seriously? Yeah, Vegeta uh, first appears in volume, uh, at the end of volume 17. I don't remember what yeah. chapter that is. He's not in all 153 episodes of Dragon Ball, and he's not even in the first, like, 15 episodes of Z. Yep. His first I, appearance is at, in, like, episode, like, 6 or something? I know you're not complete, but I feel like if I sat you down and we watched the original Dragon Ball, you would like that part. You'd probably like my brain is just blown that Vegeta is not in any of the original Dragon Ball. Nope, first appears in Z. So was... For us in America, we almost universally started out watching Dragon Ball Z, so we literally all skipped the first 150 episodes. Yup, I definitely I just did. Didn't I didn't watch any of it, so let's see. No, I'm saying we were American audiences, yeah, just in general. So his first appearance was the episode called Reunion. <laughs> Uh, wow, the, the American so, first aired in Japan in 1989. First aired in America in 2005. That's not true. <laughs> this is what's the original American air date. Yeah, June 15, 2005. That's just objectively wrong. It's Vegeta first appeared in 2005. No, his first episode, uh, Reunion, aired in English. In 2005. This is where he appeared as a cameo. This is episode 2. Yeah. No, that's wrong. Because Dragon Ball Z aired in like 1998 on Tsunami. Yeah. There's no way Vegeta was not introduced for six years when he's in the first season. Yeah, this also says the first episode aired in 2005. That's just wrong. <laughs> These are all just incorrect. In this is just incorrect information. Wait, what are you on? I'm on the Dragon Ball fandom website. Uh, that's just incorrect. <laughs> I look, but I. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know that has to be wrong because otherwise, I was I like nine years old watching Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball wouldn't have come out until. Oh, I was that's just when he. That is when he's just mentioned. So he first appears in Gohan's Rage. But it's still episode five. Six is early. Yeah, episode five was of Z is Vegeta's first appearance. He doesn't appear once in Dragon Ball. Also, Gohan appears in the first episode. Yeah, of Z. like Dragon Ball was, was here in, in the nineties, so. Yeah, that's why that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Z aired here in eighty nine or in uh, ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Okay, but where does Koro Sensei fall? That was one of the first things that was on Tsunami. Um, yeah, sorry, we got. Um, I'd put him high, good tier. Tier, yeah. I'd put him above Naruto, maybe below, maybe above Deku. I'd put him below, but I'd say below Deku. I don't know if he's better than Deku, but it's also it's hard for me to say because I watched Assassination Classroom once and I enjoyed it, but I never really had any strong feelings beyond that. I watched it once and loved it. But I'm not shitting on it, it's just how, how I was attached to the show. I watched it once, and then I watched it again over my roommate's shoulder as she watched it uh, on her computer. Nice. Did we just base it on Sunny Straight? Yes. Cool. <laughs> he, he, Sunny Straight does do a very good job as Koro. So Morgan, Koro Sunset, better or weaker than Midoriya? I would say better, but I don't particularly like Midoriya. That's fair. It's not fair. That's no, not, That's actually it, unfair. We'll, we'll say they're in the same spot and they can go in whatever. Because <laughs> I'm neutral. You're in favor of Midoriya. She's in favor of Koro. That, yeah, that's true. So, uh, All right. Now we got to finally talk the, about the tough boy, Jotaro Kujo. Jotaro, Jotaro is an okay protagonist. He's not good. He's not great. But he's definitely not bad. He's okay. 
He is cool. He has all these cool presents, and he's cool as fuck. But he doesn't do a lot outside of just beating the shit out of whoever at the end of the episode. Which, in some cases, is probably the best parts of... Like, honestly, the best parts of Part 3 usually come from Jotaro. But it is mostly just him beating people up. If we got more of, like, his, like, tactical decision-making and shit during mm. his fight with Dio at the end of Part 3, he'd or be the higher two Darby, Or the Darby brothers. Or the Darby brothers. But, like, it takes the entire run of Part 3 nearly to get to those really good episodes. Yeah, that is fair. Which, um, those are, like, some of the best episodes. <laughs> Darby, you gotta but... get through a lot to get to them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Top top of okay. I'd say middle of okay, honestly. Oh, middle of okay. You, what do you think, Morgan? I I would say okay. I don't know necessarily if I would say top or middle. Hmm. We'll go upper middle. Okay. Well, upper middle is still middle, so there's only a middle. There's only three people in okay right now, <laughs> so we'll put them in middle. Oh. All right, Maka Albarn. Top of okay, maybe? I can agree with that. I think she is uh, probably the weakest of the main three characters, but that's mostly because Blackstar is very fun and Death the Kid is really good. I, I would rank her higher than Death the Kid and probably Blackstar too, but... I mean, she has the most character of the main cast. No, she's definitely... she. She's there because she's solid. She she has some of the problems that the writer has in general of just being, well, she is also the girl character. She's written better than that, but she does default to being the girl character and doing the girl things. Mako. But, I, I do like yeah. Mako, though. She's really good. It's still so weird that Fire Force and Soul Eater come from the same author. When they feel like, like completely different series. It's like... Yeah, visually I see the connection, but like when we get to the the actual story, it's like six episodes into Soul Eater, I was having a good time. Six episodes in the Fire Force, I quit. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> it's very fair. And kind of for similar reasons, Baka's a really good main character for the most part. Uh, I don't think she's crazy, like like inspiring or any of this stuff, but she she's solid. I like I like Shinra Kusakabe. Well, but it's not Shinra that made me quit. I know. It's Fox Girl, Cat Girl. Yeah, I don't remember her name. She's really popular. I wonder I why. Know what we're talking about. There's a show called Fire Force, and oh, I know Fire Force. I just have no idea who we're talking about. You don't want to know. <laughs> like, she is a character who is literally only there for her sex appeal. That is her whole place in the show. Yep. Her underage sex appeal. And it's even worse because it's her sex appeal against her will. Yep. She has a, like, wow, She's apparently cursed show. as she states that uh, makes uh, people like essentially bump into her and touch her or remove her clothes inappropriately at random points. Yeah, that's why I don't like that show. Yeah. That's, why, that's why a lot of people don't like that show. I quit. That's why I was like, no, I can't you watch this. I don't care I how like important this character that. is. I am not watching this any further. It is the most awful, contrived garbage. And it's really weird coming off the heels of Soul Leader, where, yeah, Maka definitely got treated like a girl character at times, but she was still a good character all in all. Yeah. Um... It helps that the yeah. only overly sexual character in Soul Eater is not an important one at all. I mean, yeah. It lends a lot to taking the female character seriously. Yeah. Um, it's it's really hard character. to have a serious battle where she's kidnapped by a cult and has been tricked by them the whole time, only for then Shinra to come save her in a dramatic moment and then grab her titties by accident. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> anyway, Maka, yeah, still like top top of good, uh, okay tier, maybe bottom of good tier. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll move her to top bottom of good. Cause yeah, I think I think she's good. Yeah, you know, not more. The more we talk about, it, the more I'm like, yeah, no, Maka's a good character. She's not she's not like the star protagonist, but she's a good character. 
Yeah. Next, uh, I'm just gonna say like a high great tier is Shigeo Mob Kageyama. Okay. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. good God, is, is he such a draw? such a good fucking character? <laughs> like, when you have some of the best animation and action in like any shonen, and my favorite episode is one just about emotional dialogue and there's no action in it at all. You know you got some damn good characters with stellar writing. I think that's one of the things I like about Mob. As as Mob Mob actually has a very similar kind of character to Midoriya in terms of like, you know, hard work and all that. Yeah. <clears throat> but Mob actively works uh ignores his cheat to to victory. Yeah. He he actually does not use his psychic abilities in favor of Forcing himself to learn or to get better at things, <clears throat> even if psychic powers could just, you know, do it for him. Whereas Midoriya, I still think he's a good character, but, like, Midoriya does get handed superpowers, and he's like, I will absolutely use this. He does it for good reason. But Mob, it's like, no, this is self-improvement for self-improvement's sake. Yeah, like... He wants to be a better person. Mob is... Mob is trying to actually be, like, the normal kid. Yeah. He wants to have friends, he wants to be in clubs, which it's all stuff where it's like, yeah, you know, he's got psychic powers, he could just be the super cool superhero, but he's also like, no, I just want to be, like, normal. Yeah, he wants to work out to impress a cute girl, uh, he wants to help people when they're, when, like, you know, they're having uh, emotional struggles. I mean, the best mob episode for me is this, the first episode of season two, when he, uh, doesn't use his powers at all until it's to fix a girl's poem and it's like such a great scene yeah of, of just yeah he never cheats he always just wants to be himself and to him psychic powers are just something he has that it's not what makes him special he's just it's the core of his character that makes him a good person yeah so yeah no mob is up there in the grades like he's in the i almost feel like we need another tier separating good from great something in between but, that uh, i'm not saying let's go through and redo everything mm. but like mob is one of those characters that makes me feel like we should have like because like mob although he's not above every character we've listed in my opinion he does very much kind of feel like he's in a category above other just great characters yeah I can agree with that. He's just too great. It's the it's, it's the downfall of Mob. He's too great. <laughs> um, uh, I, and he, he's consistently like it's like he he has all the best character traits of Midoriya, but he is constantly being challenged. Yeah. Um. Like, and his are always like they're not physical struggles. More often than not, every time he's in a physical altercation, he always almost always boils it down to an emotional one. Yeah, 100%. Sorry, I didn't mean to take over. No, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, he's 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 great. At like S plus tier, he's he's amazing. Uh, what was it? But next. Oh. We've got Monkey D. Luffy. Luffy's in a weird spot for me. Because I definitely think he's good. But I've never gotten to a point where I thought he was great. Like, he is better... Now, to clarify for anyone watching this now or later, mm -hmm. I have only c consistently gotten up through uh, recently Skype up. When I first went through One Piece, I got as far as to the end of uh, Eni's life. But he never proved to me that he was anything better than the other good shonen protagonists. I don't by any means think that he's bad or even less than good. Just to be, he's just a solid, like, he'd be somewhere in the ballpark between Midoriya and Tanjiro. Probably higher than either of them, but not by... Not by a huge amount. Granted, definitely better than the other big three protagonists. Uh, 100% for sure. But, 
I'd say as yeah. I've caught up, and it's man, it's hard for me to not put him exceedingly high, because he he, I mean, you want to talk about consistency. Uh, Luffy is Luffy, tried and true. Like I know exactly who he is, and he doesn't really, like you'd say he doesn't really develop, but I'd say it's more that his character. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, there's because uh, there's a difference between character development and character um, like arc. arc. Yeah, he has a flat yeah, arc, so... and. Yeah, he, he is challenged and comes out proving that he is the right person. Like, he is the right version of himself. Yeah. Like, we know who and Luffy is. It's not a case of he needs to change. It's a case of he needs to grow, which is constantly happening. Yeah. And, yeah, no, I think that's good. I would say for me, in my opinion, I would rate him top of good tier, like the actual top or the bottom of great tier. Uh, I'll, I'll give you Bobby since you have a better opinion than me. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I'd put him even a bit higher, but I'll stick with bottom of great for the time being. I feel it's only fair because of <clears throat> Jolie to also put bottom of great tier for similar reasons. Yeah, 100%. Um, Saitama. Got a surprise to find out. We don't know his last name yet. <laughs> it's just Saitama. Maybe he just doesn't have one. <laughs> Maybe, I guess. Saitama's high good tier, no, I think. Morgan, have you watched One Punch Man? Yeah, I, I've only watched the first season, though. I never watched oh, the second. So you've watched all the good stuff, okay. I need to watch the second season. <laughs> it's not good. Honestly, the reason I think okay. Saitama is very good, I'd honestly say maybe great, is because so it's his character is funny and he's a great sat satirical character, but man, the times where he gets to really show his personality and character in, in greater detail, like... In the episode where the the tigers accuse him of the city's destruction, which to be fair was actually his fault. Uh, not really. Not really, but technically. Uh, I mean, the reason the re the reason the city is in ruin is his fault, but it's his fault because he stopped it from not being there anymore. Yeah. Y you know details. Yeah, details. So he's ripped into, and rather than, like, being aggressive or, or running away from it or anything, no, he gets pissed at them and accepts, the like, the hatred and takes it all on himself. I, I thought that was amazing because it's such a hero thing to do that know you did the right thing and accept what people think of you anyway. Honestly, the part that I instantly think of is Moving Rider's speech is my favorite scene probably in all of One Punch Man. And the fact that Saitama saves the day and everyone thinks that since he's such a low-tier hero, they consider all the other heroes, like, lesser than or, or crappy. And instead, he decides to spin it that actually they weakened him to a point where Saitama was able to just beat him in one punch and take all the credit, made them just all hate him, uh, but then love the other heroes. And I think that's just the most superhero thing to do is just like sacrifice everything just to to help others and and how important hero heroism for other people is it was just a really good and also, and also he technically is like analogous to like he's very much the same person mm. in that regard what he's just bad yeah i guess that's fair <laughs> he is like batman is a I'm case of dense death I'm just sitting here and like Zach, you went on this whole beautiful thing of like, oh, he took all the blame and to make the other heroes look good, and I'm like, I always took that as he did it because he didn't want to be a hero. <laughs> like no. he's just kind of like, I, it's, I did it's, it. it's it's very clearly framed that it's not that he didn't want to be a big time hero or anything. It explicitly says he doesn't want that because he have a lazier life. No, he didn't want the hard work of the other heroes who sacrificed so much and put themselves in danger to be seen, like, to be wasted. Like, he didn't oh, want them yeah. to... S yeah, he was trying to make it so people like Moomin Rider, who literally put his life on the line, despite not needing to, and clearly not being able to defend everyone, he still did it anyway. 
And the fact that, like, people would belittle him for that, like, Saitama couldn't take that lying down. So he had to take all the brunt of the hate, so that way the heroes could really be respected for the heroes they are, who put so much on the line. Right. Yeah, I... Momoku is mostly a guy with a bike, and he stood up to a fucking giant fish monster. They literally bodied yeah. several S heroes right beforehand. <laughs> like, like, honestly, Moonrise Speech is like, man, uh... One definitely knows why people love Common Rider, because like Moomin Rider is definitely like the symbol of what a Common Rider really is, uh, in terms of symbolism of justice. Really, like just a case of like a Superman or any other type of iconic hero for a group of people, of just more of an ideal than they are just powerful. And the yeah. reason I can go on a spiel like that is because man, do I love comic books. I love I love characters like that. That's why I love Deku Sorry. and Saitama. Yeah. <laughs> good boys. I love good boys. What were you saying, Morgan? I so don't remember now. Rem remember. I'm so sorry. Remember what? I, I started oh. thinking about other like comic book characters and stuff mm. and being like, I feel like I've seen this done before in like another comic. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I don't want to take all the glory because these other guys did a lot of work and i started thinking about that i was like looking it up and i totally zoned out i'm sure there is uh i can't think of any off the top of my head but i can almost guarantee that's happened somewhere but yeah for whatever I reason right now, honestly the the old yeah superman the only thing i can really think of off the top of my head is when batman just took all the blame for having contingency plans to kill like to defeat all the justice league that's the only um, thing I could think of. Almost got them all killed thanks to Tower of Babel. Silly Ra's al yeah. Ghul trying to kill the Justice League. God damn it, Raish. Alright, what's next on the list? We've got... Wait, where, where, where are we putting Saitama? We didn't actually agree. Uh, I thought we said Top of Good. <clears throat> I Well, you, you would say, like, great tier, so I was waiting for that debate. Oh. I, don't, I don't have... I'm not the fucking word of law here. No, I'm, I'm cool with Top of Good. I, I'm, I'm good having him be Top of Good. Yeah. Alright, that's fair. I, lo I love the superhero yeah. types. I'll have to do the same thing, but with comic book characters. Gotta, I gotta hit up my comic book guys, see if, uh, see what they think. I will do what I can, but it's, it's gonna be limited. <laughs> what? You don't, uh, what about Sodom Yacht? Where would you rank him? He's the Green Lantern, right? He is. Yeah, you got it. You know, you know him. There you go. I mean, in for, okay, I actually didn't know that he was a Green Lantern. I was making a joke because there's another character with a similar name. Oh, is there? Uh, Wait, which which not, one? Not the exact same, but like the guy who gives Hal Jordan his ring. Oh, uh, like, Abin Sor. That's Abin Sor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Abin. Okay, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, you're right. Sodom Yacht. I don't know who these people are. What what point? I actually have read the the big uh, Black is Night storyline for Green Lantern, so I'm not to be to be I'm fair. Comic book, I've read that. Sodom Yacht is in that story, so to be fair, he he's mainly in Sinestro Core War. That's where he does like the most stuff, and that's why I like him so much because that's a really good yeah. comic. Book. He definitely sounds more like a Magnus and a Gary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Morgan. You say uh, you know Sodom Yacht. Which uh, what race is he? Alien. I mean, you're right. She's right. <laughs> She's right. Sorry, I was uh, laughing uh, about the fucking Gary and Magnus thing. Yeah. I just said. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, so, uh, by, there was did he tell you the whole story, Zach? About no. That? no. So, so I'm watching go ahead. Achievement Hunter. Me and my roommate are watching uh, Achievement Hunter play Trivial Pursuit. Hell yeah. The video game. Yeah, yeah. And I watched that video, yeah. Yeah, and Isaac was like, oh read me the question so i'm reading it to him and they get to the point where you have to pick either between like this guy named gary or magnus on okay. like all these chess questions and i'm reading mm. to it and the first one is like who was defeated by a supercomputer in a game of chess and oh. isaac just goes hmm that that doesn't sound like a magnus thing magnus is too much of a chad i bet it was gary <laughs> yeah, I bet and it they was... got it right he got it <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Oh, that's that's the start. That's not the end. He got <laughs> every to be question horrible. right. <laughs> All because was he was just like, mm, Gary, I bet, th I bet, you know what? Gary's probably that little bitch who became a Croatian citizen. <laughs> I cannot say it like that. That sounds racist. <laughs> oh, so that sounds pretty racist, boss. <laughs> I said that sounds like some Gary shit. <laughs> That's bad. That's fucked up. Like every question, and I was just sitting there like, you were just guessing, a hundred percent by like vibes off of names. And it works every time. And it yeah, works. I got every question right. Yeah, Sodom Yacht's got a Green Lantern vibe. I got you. I got. I understand totally. It's so goddamn stupid. That's pretty funny. To clarify, though, uh, Sodom Yacht is a Daxamite. Oh, oh, shit. Yeah, of course. That thing, I totally know what they are. They're like Kryptonians because they come from a planet like right next to Krypton, but they're not dead. However, they have a Kryptonite, too, except it's a lot more common than sh chunks of their planet. It's lead. What a bunch okay, of fucking... When, <laughs> when you explain it like that, it makes Kryptonians sound... Like really lame. Kryptonians are are. I mean, they're kind of lame. <laughs> they're allergic to their own planet. You didn't know that. That that's no. what. That's what I kryptonite is. It's chunks. I thought that was like it's, a special element thing. It is. It's chunks of krypton. <laughs> it's chunks of an alien planet. That pe the people who are allergic to live on. Yeah, that's why Kryptonians don't have superpowers. But Superman does because he went to Earth, which doesn't have kryptonite on it. Now, remember, if we went to Mars, we would all have superhuman abilities because there's no uh, potassium on Mars. Yeah, and we don't need potassium, as you know. <laughs> it's, what weakens, it's what weakens us. That's why I don't I, eat bananas. I am so glad this stream doesn't have webcam because it would just be about five minutes of me just looking out my window, just like looking like those gifs of like the math overlay <laughs> like putting it together like oh shit that's what kryptonite is man you need to read more superman i i, I read a lot of marvel and then i got tired mm. of it mm. read at read read uh uh rebirth superman one of the best series i read but our next character is senku ishigami what show is he from He's from Dr. Stone. Oh, he's that guy. Yep, he's the guy with the radish head. He, he is high good tier. I'd also agree with high good. He he is another case where definitely carries a lot of the show. Um, in fact, when he's like not the main character for the first like two episodes, uh, it's honestly not very good. <laughs> but the minute he comes in, the show is infinitely better and he takes over the show from that point on. Yeah, there's like a weird like Senku's the main character, but like this other guy's the point of view character. Yeah, but that guy was loud and annoying with the amount of screen time he. He's pretty good later on when he's relegated to being a more secondary character. Yes, very. That's nice. because he he's just far more palatable in small amounts. <laughs> also, like him just being Senku's, Senku's best friend is great. Uh, he's just his best friend. They've known each other forever. Yeah, he, but like. He's well, like Sanku is like a super genius. He's a fucking moron. Yeah, he's just really tough and it's, uh, it's, strong. I need it's to know based on Aaron Dismuke because I don't like the show. Pretty much, except yeah. he has Aaron a Dismuke he has a strong awesome. yeah he has a strict moral code though. He doesn't punch people. He never fights back. He'll take as many punches as it takes, but he will never fight back. Dude can eat a boulder uh, to the face, but will not like throw a punch. Again, he's he's a solid character in much smaller amounts than we get him for the first couple of episodes. Yeah, but after he's he becomes like, like after he was gone for a while and like comes back, uh, I was really glad to see him come back. And then as a supporting character, he's he's way better. Yeah. Um, but Senku's been no, pretty much great the entire time as a main character. Yeah, there's just nothing about him that really drops my jaw. Like, he's a good character. But what really stops him from being a great for me is just he doesn't drop my jaw. There's nothing 
And he's not just so charismatic that I'm just like, nah, I love him. Like, he doesn't have Joseph or Josuke's super charisma. Yeah, no, he's, he's just... A, he, honestly, the thing that makes him so great is the fact that he's drastically different than any other shonen protagonist. He's scrawny, he's weak, he's insanely intelligent, and he's a huge dick to everybody. But well, like, not so much that you actually hate him for. Yeah, because he's not a bad person. He's just a dick because he has fun just making fun of messing with people also man he really likes to make weird like anytime he thinks science he gets really creepy and it's great it's like hey, we can make gunpowder with this <laughs> it's like whoa <laughs> this dude's fucking weird all right so what's next we got uh tai kamiya aka yagami taichi Yo, why did they change his name to Kamiya when it's just a different Japanese-sounding name? I don't know. I don't know why they made him Tai Kamiya or Kamiya, depending upon when they pronounce it. But Wait, is like, who is this? So in Digimon. Make it, yeah, Digimon. Digimon Adventure specifically, the original run. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so, so yeah, I don't, I don't get it because they don't change anybody else's last names, only their first names, and they change them into like nicknames. They don't really change them that much. Yeah, actually, it's one of the things that is actually, in, in a way, very revolutionary. They just made nicknames of their first names, but they clarified that, you know, like, Matt, for example. Matt's full name is Yamato. And they show that on screen, that his name is actually Yamato. Yeah, they just call him Matt. But everyone calls him Matt. Matt, yeah. Like Joichi, and, and, or is Joe, and Takaru is TK. For, for, for that time period, that was actually pretty, 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 uh, pretty big step. Yeah, because back then we just, uh, <laughs> we just Americanized everything. No, that was four yeah. kids. That's true. That was mainly four kids, and this was, uh, this was Fox. Well, four kids was or the Saban Brands, for actually. Yeah, this was Saban Brands. And, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, the only characters whose names they changed was Kari and Tai's last names from Yagami to Kamiya. I, I don't know why, they just did. <clears throat> Everyone else has the same last name. It's a error. It maybe? I guess, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of, because literally everyone else just has nicknames for their first names, and all have the exact same last name. But where would we rank Ty? The, the... Ty's tricky. Because he's... Cause Ty's actually a surprisingly good character for the type of show he's in. Yeah. I, I would say he's probably like a good character i'd say so honestly re-watching it recently like we haven't finished it just yet but we're at the very end um i'm surprised how much depth he has as a character he's not just like an ash who's just like you know a, a kid who gets a little reckless and, and just jumps in into everything no honestly he has a lot of self-esteem issues as a leader of the group and he actually struggles with trying to figure out what's the best way to move forward especially when it puts his friends in danger and no, actually, there's a lot of depth to his character, which is really weird for a show, of, like a kid show involving raising pet monsters. To clarify, <laughs> there, there's one scene, it's one of Ty's definitive scenes uh, in about the early mid part of the show, where he finds out that they're in a digital world and it's like not technically real like we would consider it real. And uh, he kind of just takes everything as, oh, well, Nothing we do matters. It doesn't matter. You know, we're, yeah, it's a video you know, we're not real. We're data. We'll be fine. <clears throat> uh, and he does all this crazy shit, including uh, at one point, they have this electric fence they have to go through, and there's one area where you can actually walk through it, directly yeah, through it, safely. Izzy's trying to figure out what the supporting yeah, character's like, trying to figure out where it's at. <laughs> he thinks he figures it out, and he points it out, and I just I brazenly walk through it. Then come to find out later on in that episode that, no, Ty very much could have died. Like, just actual died dead. Yeah, he said it. He, Not alive. Yeah, because Izzy... And he had to get his crippling fear of dying on his way going back out of there. Because now all his friends are in danger because the big bad evil guy came out of the woodwork. I mean, we get and a whole gonna... episode of him, like, after they tell him that. Him, his real is... We get a, pretty much a whole episode of him, like, struggling with accepting the fact he could have died doing all that. Like... 
And then the next episode is literally him having to go through the electric fence again and him struggling, like, even trying to move. Well, would you want to get shot? D- to death? No, probably not. No, I'm saying it's totally reasonable. We're saying plan. that's what makes when them you, so good. There's so much to it. So Sorry, what was that, Morgan? Like, when he walks through <clears> the <throat> fence originally, is it actually, like, the spot that he wouldn't get electrocuted? Yes. Yeah, no, he, he locks out and he goes through the right spot. Because his friends then, like, point it out, and then he just runs right through it. No problem. Then it, his friend Izzy berates him. Like, dude, you could have died walking through there. He's like, it's a, it's a simulation. What does it matter? He's like, no, no, you don't understand. You would have died. Yeah, they pretty much have to clarify to him. We don't know how this world works. Anything that happens to you could be the end for you. Just because we're data doesn't mean our lives aren't on the line. That's what they thought they were doing. And this isn't talking about all the supporting characters, because I know we're talking about Ty for this list. Yeah. But we're talking about, like, right, for, for the original run of Digimon, yeah. we have to deal with Izzy they're, finding they're out not, that he's adopted and coming to terms with the fact that his parents are not biologically his parents. Yep. Uh, we have Matt and TK but, but trying to deal with uh, being brothers even though they never see I've each other because they have divorced parents. Yep. And Matt's uh, uh, struggle to to believe in his mom because she was never there because he was raised by his dad who was also distant and never home like this is the kind of shit that was for like the eight year olds that this show was directed at yeah like yeah, is no, Digimon it's... a top tier show no it's not but it deals with some impressively real and heavy subject matters for something that is aimed at kids who probably aren't even in double digits yet yeah, I'd so, put him in. I'd say I might be mid to high good tier. Yeah, I think we'll put like, around around mid high. I think yeah. We'll like, put him right there's up definitely there. detractors. Like we're talking about all the basics. There's definitely downsides to all this. Yeah, but like just the fact that they attempt to go through some of these character arcs is like that's that's some intense shit for a kid show. That's some that's balls, <laughs> developers, man. Bandai, you got some fucking balls, bro. Um, also, the show's still, like, I still love it, mostly for nostalgia, but God, is it not great? <laughs> but I love it still anyway. <laughs> I love it for nostalgia, but I also feel like it has a lot of high points. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't have low points. It's got low points. Oh boy, does it. Though I will stand, but it... it is great to hear both Bobobo slash Old Man Joe Star also voice Dracula and a monkey that is an Elvis impersonator. But that is him. Yeah, though all those I know, guys... <laughs> I know when we were rewatching I was like, "Wait a minute. That's totally Bobo." I was so happy to hear him be Edamon and Myotismon. Oh, he's also Elvis. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, no. He he is the Elvis monkey and Dracula. And Bobo and Joseph Joestar. <laughs> yeah. Only old man Joe Star, but yes. I know it's old man Joe Star, but still. Uh, it's he's so good. I, I love him so much. <laughs> he's... Said, Joseph, what happened to your British accent? Who can't really? sound American born now? You just started talking so, about that. I'm like, I have no idea who we're talking about, but I've got the voice of Warmon, so like, get fucked. Uh, I've met, I've met a few off. Digimon voice actors, but, like, I didn't know at the time, because most most people who voice Digimon characters have voiced, like, random Digimon at some point. Yeah, I, I mean, met... also, if you meet Steve Bloom, you've met, you've met half the Digimon cast, really. And I have. Yeah, I met, uh, Patrick St. Paul, who voices Zemnets in Kingdom Hearts. Oh, yeah, and you then... mentioned that before, yeah. And then I met the yeah. guy who voices Vexen, who's also in Digimon, but I don't remember who. Yeah, I'm so like Patrick I'll, I'll... St. Paul is in Wormmon. Yes. Yes, Patrick it St. is. St. Paul is Wormmon. Yes, he, he's <laughs> he the Wormmon. Before we that, I just really had to double check because he's that also like sound he's also like Leomon or something like. Th- mm. Leomon's yeah, had a, a good right right there. Uh, a few is Leomon's have had different ones. Yeah, I think he's original Leomon too. So yeah. Oh, that would make sense, but... And, yeah, I could definitely see Leomon and Zemdis a lot easier than I could see any of those two and Wormmon. And Wormmon. 
Wormon. I, it was very interesting to hear him switch between Zemnus and Wormon. <laughs> to be fair, hearing Steve uh, Bloom go Spike and then to Orochimaru is also very odd. Sasuke. 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 So, all right, now we got Tenma. She's best girl. <laughs> She's best girl. She is very cute. I, I love how she is pure dumb. One hundred percent is so dumb, and that's her defining character, and it works so well. <laughs> I really feel like we should talk about Haruma instead, since he has a lot more character than Tenma. So this is School Rumble. If you haven't watched it, Morgan, I have not. I was in the process of like trying to Google who we're talking about. Uh, definitely check it out. It's it's probably my favorite romantic it's comedy very stupid and it's wonderful the two romantic leads the big thing they have in common is they're both canonically fucking stupid yeah and it's not even like anime stupid no they're actually stupid yeah like, there's actually like... a line from harima where they both have extra lessons because they both failed classes and his inner monologue reads no, thank it god i was born stupid hola buenas noches what's up hate. <laughs> That's true. Aqua is very dumb as well. But yes. see, see. Oh, uh, yeah. I just picked. I don't like. It's not yeah. endearing. But like Tenma and Harima, absolutely are just like, like, like. Oh my god, are they st fucking stupid? It's great. That's because they're both largely, for the most part, good people. Aqua's not. Yeah, I guess Aqua's that's a, that is that is a big difference. Uh, Harima and Tenma are actually good people. Uh, whereas Aqua's not. <laughs> she she's a huge bitch to everybody. The only person, the only person who's a, the only main character in uh, Kono Super who's actually, without exception, a good person, is Darkness, the masochist. Isn't some side characters too though? Gets off on, no, as much as she gets off on getting the shit beat out of her, she also will genuinely do what she can to help people, and there's no real strings attached to that aside from. If it involves her getting her ass beat, she will get off. But outside of that, no, she's actually just a good person. Whereas everyone else, it's dubious. And there's some supporting or like side characters who are also at least good people. But I mean, out of the main four, Darkness is the only one with who, without reservation, is a good person. Well, here I'm gonna Make put me. Harima and Tenma together just because they're both great. Yeah. So Harima and Tenma good tier yeah they're good yeah. like they're just the honestly like in terms of character there isn't a ton there but man are they just so fun sometimes yeah, very fun sometimes you can just be fun <clears throat> again i would rate harima higher based purely on harima goes through a lot of like character arcs like he, he he's constantly struggling to kind of find his place like and he's trying to pursue his artistic Tom's career as well as pursue his romantic interests for... And Tenma doesn't really have any of that. She's just, just obsessed with the guy who wants nothing but curry. Well, because... I mean, a big part of... Um, of the show is the fact that... In terms of School Rumble, is the fact that... Harima's into Tenma... Do we know why? Is it just because he sees her and thinks she's really cute? There's a reason, but I don't remember why. It's I haven't watched it in over a decade. <laughs> it sticks out very well as a show I really enjoyed, but I haven't watched it. Anyway, let's not drag this out because I don't want to just fucking talk about something we all can't participate in. Sure. Um, we'll put her in... Uh, put her around <clears throat> uh, Cosmo. Put, him, put her in good near Cosmo. Uh, all the stupid, all in one place. All the stupid in one place, exactly. Um, yeah, but weirdly enough, the least dumb of his crew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Alright, so next we've got uh, Toru Honda. Toru Honda's in great. So that's not even a question. Oh yeah. But where, She's but where amazing. in great does Toru Honda go? At the highest rate ever. Um, that's a good question. See, she She's is a high. better version of Tanjiro. 
where her main place in the show is to facilitate the development of other characters. But the main difference is she actually also has a character arc, whereas Tanjiro does not really have one. Well, as we pointed out before, a flaw with certain characters is whether they can struggle or not, and Tanjiro doesn't really, in terms of his morality. Uh, Man, Toru is punished for being so nice. Like, it is a hard... It's hard for her to be as nice and good of a person as she is. Because you 100% is, like, the nicest person ever. And she is constantly put in, in hardships for it. Which is why it makes it so much more, so much stronger that she does it. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it makes her life actively harder to be a good person. But she does it anyway. And, and as a viewer, for, you really see basket. it as, well, like, what, what, she struggles to maintain it. Like, there's multiple times where you see it break and she's like, I just can't do it. But yeah. then she somehow <clears throat> gains back the strength to keep the smile on yeah. her face. Well, actually, as we're pointing out, the fact that Toru's greatest strength is the fact that she's a great person, but it's hard. It, it hurts her life to be such a good person, which makes her struggle as a good person that much better as a viewer. Because we know how hard it is for her to just be always happy, always smiling, despite her life being very difficult. Uh, yet she does it anyway, which was what makes her seem... We know how hard it is for her to be such a perfect, like, good person, so not to be harsh, like, a hardship on others, that it makes it so much more that she's doing it anyway. And I we see she's... it with other characters, too. Like, yeah. they... Sorry, Isaac. Uh, oh, uh, th- like we see other characters like actively tell her you don't have to always be happy you can you know yeah that's a big feel- struggle in the show is everyone telling her you can feel things <laughs> you don't have to be happy all the time you can be it's sad that it's that thing where it's like she is feeling everything but okay. she doesn't want From them to know that she's oh, struggling yeah. because yeah. doesn't want to put that burden on them right I feel like she needs to be near the top, if not the top. Uh, I put her. Num- I put her right below Joseph. Should she be above honestly, Joseph? She should be above Joseph. As much right. as I love Joseph, she's she's oh. definitely the top for me out of the ones oh, I've known on this list. Right. Okay, My awesome. only criticisms about her aren't even yeah. her fault. It's the story's fault. Yeah, that's fair. And that's just because at the end the story gets a little on the convoluted side. <clears throat> Like, it's not the worst, but considering how good the writing is before that, it's noticeable for me. But, oh man, I'm like, oh, season two is so oh, fucking good. She's really good. Like, you got the long ass beach shit, but like, outside of that, season two is just so good. But the beach stuff serves a purpose. Oh, it, the it's beach stuff is We're gonna have a beach it episode. Just it just goes on for a while, <laughs> is the only problem with it. Um. Yeah, no, Toru definitely, like, deserves to be near the top of this. Is that only in the anime? Like, she's just such an emotionally complex person while being very simple on the outside. I read the manga, I don't remember that. Hmm. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, that's how I understand. Like, I'm glad we can all agree on this point. Oh, yeah, no, she's great. Definitely very high, uh, because she's an amazing main character. It's been so long since I've read the manga, though. That's fair. Oh. So next, right, who's next? we've got Giorno Giovanna. Oh, oh no. Too many Is he Jojo Jojo tier or terrible tier? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I think he's okay tier. I'll give him okay, but it'll be grudging. Because he, he has the same problem as Jotaro, where he just sits in the background all episode. But then the end of the episode comes around, someone needs to get their ass beat, but he doesn't do that either. <laughs> and he does well, get he, the anime bullshit power up at the end. He also has his power just completely manhandled to the point where he can do literally anything the plot needs it to. Oh, you lost an arm? Don't worry. I can make a rock turn into an arm, and then somehow that, you know, attaches to you. Yep. Done. You're healed. You got shot? I'll just put a rock in you and then turn that into the rest of your chest, I guess, even though 
Nothing about my power suggests I should be able to connect the tissues. Nope. <laughs> you essentially just put another heart in in his chest. <laughs> but you just said Bottom it. Bottom of both pages is the nicest I'm going to be towards him. Uh, I've seen very... I've only read the first, like, 30 chapters, because there's not any more on the Shonen Jump app. So I don't and know. Again, like, up, up through Black Sabbath, he's a pretty good character, and then he just gets relegated to the background while... Bucciarati does most of the heavy lifting for the show. I'm on the train. I, I don't know. That's where I'm at. They're on a train. Um, But he's been fine. I can say his biggest weakness from this early aspect is the fact that he's probably the least, the one I like the least of the party because the party's pretty great. I don't know. Bakio's kind of lame. Yeah, I was about to say, I kind of don't like Abakio. He's just an asshole, and that's the only real... Like, he's got a sad backstory, but... I expect... Like, that... yeah. I expected to like Narancia, but he's actually my favorite. Narancia's great. Oh. Uh, Bruno's also fun. A lot, a lot of them are pretty great, though. But Narancia's my, my favorite. Big problem with, uh, my big problem with uh, Part 5 is... I think all of them are just fine at those. We don't talk about hmm. Bruno. I think so. Oh, yeah, we don't. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> all right, so our next character is Leonardo Watch. So as much as I love the show God, and Leo. Blood, blood blockade is so good. It, it's, it's so good. I will say he's only like a great, I would say. He's only a great. <laughs> he's only the top tier of the of our list. Yeah, he's only a great. <laughs> that's that's. I mean, that's what you said. You know, I like the show. I you like him, but you know what? You he's know what only a he's only a great. Yeah. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Because, because... Well, we're gonna have a brief turtle spat. <laughs> because I think he's good, and that's that's it. Like he's he's good. I I think he's I think... a low grade. I mean, come on, Isaac. He's only great. He's only great. <laughs> his great, his I'll biggest, just, his biggest flaw I'll, is he's I'll actually just great. Just for the phrasing for that, <laughs> but I don't believe he's better than good personally. I, I, I would say he is low great. I mean, I do really like him. I know what I said. He's only great, the top tier of this list, but um. <laughs> Look, I get yeah, he is a cute boy. But he's not even my favorite character. Oh, uh, do you like the do you like the huge asshole? What's his name? No, oh, no, she she clearly likes Beast from X Men. Uh, ah, yeah, he, he he's is close. He, he's he, great. He, he is also my favorite. <laughs> I oh, also yeah, yeah Beast. You introduced a, I was introduced to a character who all of his attacks are German. Yeah. You don't think watching this show. As a German major. But man, yeah, he, he has a German. Man, but he just loves to read and play complicated demon chess. And drink tea. And drink tea. And yes, I mean, he's, yeah. he's literally just Beast from the X-Men. So, honestly, every character from that show is just X-Men characters, which is why it's so good. Oh, yeah. It's very much just an X-Men show with different characters in it. Uh... But yeah, no. Uh, I give Leonardo watch like bottom of great here, but I think he's more of a high good myself. Uh, I'm actually gonna agree with you. I think he's high good. I put him just below Senku, myself. All right. Okay, I'll go with high good. All right, we, we gotta cut it in the middle though. Let's give him top good. Okay, I'll put him top good. That's fine. Put him above Saitama. Yeah, all right. We got. We got. We gotta make sure we're all having our voices heard. Alright, Vash. Um, that's the, the happy medium. Vash the stampede. Vash the stamp love and peace! Love and peace! Now, I love Vash. Trigun is one of my favorite shows. It's way underrated. And, like... It's way underrated when it is considered, like, one of the 90s classics. Only yes, because, like, the only reason I'd say yes is because most people don't talk about it. But you're right. When they do point it out, people are like, oh, man, I loved that show. I do agree that just saying you love that show is, is plenty. 
It's just, you know, no one really, like, thinks about the show. So when it's mentioned, people are like, oh, yeah, I used to watch it on, like, Toonami or something. Or on Adult Swim. It was really good. because it has such a hard shift about halfway through the show. It goes from very much an episodic, fun show with some darker moments to, no, now we're dark and serious. Now we're a dark sci-fi western. Yeah, I remember I read the manga before I watched Trigun, because I just got it from my local library. Nice. And I was like, oh, this is super cute. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now, I have not seen the whole of Trigun oh, in so well over a decade. Oh, well, that's fair. <laughs> I will uh -huh. give Bash a high good, but I'm pretty sure he deserves higher good. Uh, I would say, l like, mid to low grade. Cause I haven't seen all of Trigun. You should really, it, it's damn I know, I good. Did. But, honestly, Where are you at, Morgan? yeah. I, I would say, it, it's been a, f like, I've watched it within, I would say, maybe the last ten years. Because um, I know I rewatched it when I was getting my bachelor's. Um, so I would say... I, I would probably put Vash as, like, a high good. High good? Let's see. So what would want to do? Put him next to Leo? Yeah, I think he goes next to Leo then. Uh, Vash, funny enough, is actually the whole basis on my Lucky Red character. No, that's fair. Yeah. Um... Alright, so before we go into the very last character, I did want to talk about Gintoki, since he's just sitting here but wasn't on our list. Uh, and I know Isaac and I are the only ones who really know him. I assume. most are the only ones, like, not two-thirds of the I never conversation. watched it. <laughs> That's fair. Yes, you have. One episode does not count that's as that, one. That's all you need to see. <laughs> it's all you Fairly. need to see. You know what episode two is at. Oh my god, did you show her the Saint Seiya episode? <laughs> <laughs> like, he barely does anything in that. It's just making Saint Seiya jokes. Yeah, it's yeah, Gintama. What are you talking about? You watch Gintama. <laughs> that, that's the... I Halfway into that season, the show literally gets fucking dead serious. Like... And somehow it not only works, but is considered one of the best arcs in anime, in shonen anime. And I completely agree, because it's very good. Yeah. And it somehow does this without completely alienating the audience. No, it feels very Just natural. Tonal shift. Yeah, it's crazy. I love Gintama. And it's mostly for reasons like that. It's extremely hilarious and stupid. And then all of a sudden it can be deathly serious. And it works. I'll give Gintoki a low grade, personally. I feel the same. He's probably my favorite big shonen protagonist, just because he really is just a, a fucking dick. And <laughs> the fact that, that that's his... I feel like it's the definition of chaotic neutral. Yeah, he just does what he wants. Nothing else matters. Like, he, he, he'll he fight for his friends, but he'll also be a giant asshole to them. I always like to point well, out, man, the episode where... Him and the chief of police, or the vice chief of police, switch bodies, and the vice chief in his body pays uh, his best friends their their required wages. They instantly know it's not Gintoki because he would never pay them, and they instantly preferred this version of Gintoki, so they didn't want him back. I'm like that. Yeah, that's that's Gintoki. I love, he's so good. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Low grade, dude. Then our, right, who's the last one? Our very last Look. character is Yusuke Yurimishi. Ooh, this is going to be a difficult conversation because. Morgan, have you watched Yu Yu show? No. Mm. And Zach and me have very different opinions on Yusuke. Yeah. Let's put him in high grid tier and just call it. I mean, yes, that we're both in a fight about it. I, I don't disagree with you, so I'll, I'm cool with that. Um, like, I personally put him closer to like a low mid grade. 
Mm-hmm. But that's not a fight I'm gonna win if it's me versus you and we have very different opinions. We're gonna have to beat in the middle. Yeah. Well, I'd still put him in good. I still think he's a very good character. It's just uh my problem with Yusuke is, you know, he's he's a pretty awful person. And even though he has I mean, cool... he's really not an awful person, but yeah. Okay, he has moments he's where he's someone... Yeah, he has more ambiguity. Yeah. Also, uh, I'd right. I'd say he is a case of being not consistent as well, but not to an extreme where I would think it would like re- it kills his character. I f- I don't feel like he's inconsistent. I think he's consistent, but that consistency goes into he as a character doesn't know who he's supposed to be, and that does make him inconsistent, mm. but in a way that narratively makes sense. Yeah, I, th- I yeah like yeah I I that's that's very true. Yeah, like he he is at a point where he does not know who he is supposed to be, and is searching for direction in his life. And yeah, that leads him to have interactions where he's kind of all over the place. Well, shockingly, I get to just ignore. So so I'll just go through our tiers real quick, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. But surprisingly, we have no terribles, mostly because we just talked about characters we either knew or liked. So uh, we didn't think any of these characters were exactly terrible. What uh, happens when you have a tier list that uh, you pick the characters for? That's true. For us picking the characters, it's a lot harder to just we hate. Didn't go out, uh, we didn't go out of our way to think of shows with terrible characters that we had seen. Yeah, we mostly just thought of ones we really liked. Like, honestly, if I, like, really wanted to go deep, I mean, there's, like, I don't know, Cyborg009, who I like, but, like, his old I version... Our... Sorry, go ahead. His old version is awful. Like, during the Astro Boy days? Oh, man. If we had thought to put him in the list, I would say Ash and Yugi would be in terrible. No, Yugi's great. You're you're great. Ash isn't on the list. What are you talking about? The, sorry, Yugi is not on the list. Yeah. Ash is. But I argued that he is a worse character than we, than we ranked him. That's true. Well, you said, like, bottom of bad. You didn't really say it. terrible. No, but I'm thinking back at it, I'm like... <laughs> Literally, he makes the show harder <laughs> by making decisions that no person would ever come to. Yeah. Hey, at least he's consistent. That never changes. Consistent in being an <laughs> awful character. <laughs> like, Yugi, it's kind of the same. He literally just makes up bullshit to win his duels that don't make sense. He, that's true. But again, he is cons- a consistent character. I say, yeah, like, the show doesn't even actually follow the rules of the card game. Yeah, no, it really does. Not even just him. Most of the opponents he faces doesn't either. But he just makes a bullshit and, it, and they just accept it. <laughs> All right, rapid fire. Let's go through these. All right. Well, so, let, let's, let's stop to comment after each section. Yeah, I, I agree. So starting from bad tier, I'm going to go from bottom to top. So the bottom of bad tier, we have Kirito. We have Natsu Dragneel, Ichigo Kurosaki, and Ash Ketchum. I feel like Ash should actually bottom out that tier, but yeah, that's fair. Yeah, well, Ashley fought for it, and I'm like, yeah, he sucks, but I wouldn't put him at the worst of all time. Thank you. Just like even in that lineup, though, I'm like, he's the one that's easily the most frustrating as a character, and not in an understandable way, in a, no, this defies any human logic way. (laughs) I get it, yeah. Um... All right, okay, tier, we got Giorno Giovanna, Goku, uh, Jotaro Kujo, and Inuyasha. Big asterisk next to Jotaro. He is much higher when talked about as a supporting character. Yeah, in part, Jotaro, in part four, Jotaro, he's Jotaro, really good. Part four. Yeah, Jot- in part three, he's just there. Yeah, at least he has some of the best moments, but yeah, he's, he's much better in part four. Uh, now our our biggest tier, the good tier, we have Maka Albarn, Jonathan Joestar, Tanjiro Kamino. Uh, Har- uh God damn, I keep saying Har- I keep saying Harima. It's uh, Tenma. I don't remember her last name. Uh, Kazuma, isn't Kazuma Sato? 
Yeah, Kazuma Sato. Kazuma Sato. We got Haruhi, who I don't remember her last name. Uh, Fujioka. Fujioka, okay. Naruto Uzumaki, Yagami Taichi, uh, Koro Sensei, Yusuke Yurameshi, Senku Ishigami, Izuku Midoriya, Saitama, Leonardo Watch, and Vash the Stampede. I feel like that's reasonable. Like I, I would personally change a few things there, but as a whole, I think that's that's fair. Some good. It's a good lineup, uh, man. Good lineup. I would put. I would personally. Uh, again, I uh, wasn't gonna fight this, but I would personally put Yusuke higher up in the good tier. Yeah. I don't know, God, man. I, I still, I still feel we're... Senku carrying the show on his back really carries him as a, as a main character. That's fair, but the big thing with Yusuke is he would be carrying the show on his back if not for the fact that all the supporting cast. I would say, except the, the fact that the supporting cast is great and a few of the villains are really good. Like Togoro to and and. Uh, God, I can't think of his name, but the Chapter Black villain are both good. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, Chapter he's... Black villain pulls some shit out of his ass, but like, they're still both good villains. Togoro being up there is like one of the all-time great shonen villains, in my opinion. Oh yeah, Young Togoro is one of the best of all time. I'd actually put him above Yusuke as like iconic characters in Yu Hakusho. Just because, like, I honestly have a hard time arguing with that. Because like, God, he's just. Oh, I murderous if he saw this tier list <laughs> two of his favorite characters relegated to okay tier and good tier yeah with none of his favorites making great tier yeah okay. in fact almost everything in great tier is almost our characters he either doesn't know or knows nothing about the show yeah also naruto's above goku that's fair naruto's more complicated though no i know i'm like, just naruto's saying why he would be upset Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Um, Alright, and then finally in great tier, we have Gintoki Sakata, mostly because I couldn't put him any higher because of how tierless work. Or else I would have put him at least more lower middle. Uh, Monkey D. Luffy, Jolene Kujo, I don't remember the girl from Psychopaths' name. Akane Sinomori. Akane Sinomori. Yeah. Edward Elric, Josuke Higashikata. Uh, what's Kaguya's last name? Sama. Yeah, Sama. Uh, she... <laughs> it's what? Shinomiya. Ka okay, Kaguya Shinomiya. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. it's Sama. She is the. She's related to Koro. Koro Sensei. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jos Joseph Joestar. Uh, uh. Toru Honda and Shigeo Kagiyama. I have two things I would want to change there. Okay. I actually think Toru deserves to beat out Shigeo. Okay. I, I was going to say uh, that too, but that's just because I like Toru. I mean, I like Toru too, but like. Again, she is an incredibly complex character written very well. Uh, like, and not that Mob is not also an amazing character, but like, the difference between the realism of their character arcs is enough for me to think that Toru deserves to be higher. Sure. I also would place Ed above Josuke. Really? Okay. I'm not saying you have to change them. I'm saying that's my personal opinion. So I haven't asked. Well, this is this is where we put stuff. But yeah, no, the, those are the only two things I would change. Other than that, I think I think we put a good tier list together. What do you guess? Yeah. Wait. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I you know I like a lot of these characters, so I like. Um generally most of where i would put a good chunk of them there's probably only a couple i'd put elsewhere but not enough to where like i fight for it yeah the <laughs> only big one for me where it would be a huge disparagement for me is really the placement of 
use case. But again, you know, we're 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 meeting in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Morgan, how do you feel? I mean, for the shows that I actually know, I feel like they're pretty reasonably placed. I and mean, what about the ones you don't? What? Well, she said the shows she does know are reasonably placed, but I said, what about the shows you don't know? How would she know? Right, she doesn't know, so she needs to <laughs> she needs to tell me what she thinks. Of them. I think they are placed oh in places. That's a good point. You're not wrong. Um, yeah, no. Um, anything you guys would change, we don't have to change it, but like anything you would change if it was your personal choice. Uh, Deku and Vash would be much higher. And if I could, so, I, I would put uh, Gintoki way higher. <laughs> but that that's pretty much the only big differences for me. Most of these are pretty much where I'd put them. Why couldn't you put him higher? Uh, I couldn't put Gintoki higher because he's technically not on the tier list itself. He's on the screen of the, uh, of the stream. Oh, so it looks like he's else. on the list. No, he's not covering anybody, but he looks like he's on the list. But he's technically not, so I can't actually move him, or else he'll just cover somebody. Yeah, yeah I think he'd be a little higher myself. Vash, again, he probably does deserve to be higher. It's just it's hard for me to say where I would put him, because it's been so long since I've seen the show. Mm, that's fair. Like, literally, I have not watched it since, in its entirety since I was in high school. Jeez, that's, it. that's, that's been a little bit. Yeah, it was basically yesterday. So, I, Isaac, you, you know the. That's being you're being yeah. ridiculous. It was basically yesterday. Uh, so. Yeah, it. I. For me, I would feel wrong putting someone really high when I don't actually know for a fact that they should be really high. Mm. And like, oh, good tier is a good place to put someone if you, if you like them but you're unsure, on how good they are. Whereas great tier, I'm like, no, I feel like if we're putting it in great tier, we need to, you know, pretty much universally agree that it is a great character. Yeah. Which I can agree with everyone we've got. Well, I guess I, I actually don't know about the girl from Psychopaths, but sure. What about you, Morgan? <laughs> like I said, would you change anything? Um, I mean, like, the only thing I'd probably change is I would make Toru probably the top of the list. Um, oh, I already did that. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, since we both agreed that, I think that's yeah, fair I, to I, say. I already, I already put her on number one. Um, and Ashley agrees to have any complaints for that. The, the See, only other thing I would change is I, I would probably, like, like Zach said, I'd probably put Vash higher, but I really just totally. don't remember that much. Like, I remember, like, the iconic <laughs> stuff. But outside of that, I'm like, I don't remember, like, you know, let's, let's move Vash up, then. Let's move Vash up a little bit, because we all agree we either think or know he should be high. So that means we're wrong for putting him as low as we have been. Then I'll put him bottom of grade, since we're still compli yeah, it's, it's complicated. Yeah, I'll take your word for it, Zach, since you have recently seen it and have strong opinions, and Morgan, since you have much more recently than I seen it. And think he deserves to be higher. I think putting him at the bottom of grade is perfectly fair. Yeah. You're an airplane. Oh. Okay. Well then, uh, I guess with that, guys, uh, we'll don't forget to stay lucky. We'll see you at the next one. You know, we'll uh, hopefully do we, another one pretty soon. What if we want to forget? And if the first not at the top of your lips, you're you're objectively wrong. We've already said it. Uh, hold on. I've got. Uh, I forgot. There's a. Uh, one second, one second. I've got to fix our list. I just realized how wrong it is. Uh-oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm fixing our list. I, I forgot. We do have something that has to go in the bottom. So in the in the bottom of our list, uh, I've got to put in a Chicken Little tier, which has Chicken Little on it. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Damn. 
<laughs> How could you have been so stupid? My my bad. It's my fault. I should have remembered. I should have remembered. Uh, Ashley, or, Ashley, Morgan, since you have not been a part of uh, our, our stream <laughs> before, the Chicken Little uh, tier is the honorary tier where we put literally the first, and that's Chicken Little. That's Chicken Little, yeah. Like, from the animated Chicken Little movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the uh, film uh, made by Disney called Chicken where Little? the sky is falling. Where the sky is falling. Aliens. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, Chicken yeah. Little tier. Yeah, Chicken Little. Here we go. Now it's fixed. So at the bottom of our list is Chicken Little tier. Which, so we uh, have nothing in the terrible tier, but we have the Chicken Little tier. Which yeah, is even I, I just got rid of the terrible tier. <laughs> just it's just added Chicken Little tier instead. It's, Perfect. It, it's you fixed. You have been watching too much, Charlie. <laughs> Alright. Uh, well, we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>